Call the Tuesday, October 20th, 2015 City of Oldsmar City Council meeting to order. If you would please, please rise for our invocation and our pledge that will be led by our City Attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. The Father in Heaven, give us power to clearly discern right from wrong. Allow our words and actions to be governed thereby and by the laws of this land. We ask for your inspiration to strive in our endeavors to serve the public. We also ask that you that you direct us so that above all things we'll discharge our duties for the benefit of the people that we serve. This we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and once again welcome. And for those of you that are wondering why I'm wearing this crazy jacket, um, I put the request out for breast cancer awareness to see if I could get a pink jacket. And uh, my friend Dusty Showers, who heads the second baseman for breast cancer awareness, came forward and uh, offered me this jacket. So I did that. And I have on the pink shoes as well. So, um, <laughs> But at any rate, it's a very important cause. He actually rode from Clearwater Beach to uh, Los Angeles, California, wearing a bra and a different one every day in support of breast cancer awareness. So I just um, I just went with the pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yesterday. <laughs> I'm okay with that, <laughs> but you look snazzy. Well, thank you. So uh, that's why I'm wearing the jacket. So for the month of October, well, I'm not going to wear it the whole month, just tonight. <laughs> <laughs> our first item is our citizens open forum. It allows you to address anything, uh, brings anything to the council. We ask that you uh, keep it in no more than five minutes. State your name and address clearly for the record. You are allowed to address anything on the agenda. But if it is a public hearing, which we looks like we do have one item, we ask you to speak at that time. Having said that, would anybody on this side of the room like to address the council? Yep. Becky. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Becky Afonso, 250 Strathmore Avenue in Oldsmar. I'd like to first thank the uh, city of Oldsmar the fire department and public works for welcoming the Florida Bicycle Association Board of Directors and the annual membership meeting. We had a really great time and of course we got invited to the BMX opening so that was even more fun. I'd also like to remind the council, residents of Oldsmar, that yes, that centennial is right around the corner. And the fifth Friday concert dates and details for other activities can be found on the website. And that website is oldsmar100.com. And by 100, it's 100, oldsmar100.com. You'll find sponsorship opportunities, vendor applications, volunteer registration, all of that on the website, in addition to signing up for the time capsule. So I encourage everybody to check that out and get ready to celebrate Oldsmar to the 100th power. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else on this side of the room? Yep. Jerry. Jerry Antosi, 509 Shore Drive East. Mayor and council members, I have a couple of announcements and I should piggyback off uh, Becky's, but I'll do it at the end. Uh, Tomorrow is a very special day. We have the Pinellas County Historic Preservation Board and the Oldsmar Historical Society hosting the Historic Preservation Summit. And it's restoring Oldsmar homes, houses, and buildings. And we have Gabby McGee as one of the speakers and four, five others. And if you're interested in preservation or restoration of homes and buildings, come out. We have some great experts that will be speaking. That's at one o'clock, Oldsmar Public Library. And we have refreshments too, real good ones. That brings people out too. <laughs> November 14th, the Oldsmar Historical Society is gonna be meeting at the Women's Club of Oldsmar at 207 Exeter Street at 10 a.m. It's a Saturday, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about the history of the Women's Club in Oldsmar and videotape them. The last thing, I want you to save the date. We have, and, and the brochures are downstairs. I should have brought one up for each one of you, but uh, his, we're gonna have our very first historic 
Oldsmar self-guided Christmas tour. It's, it's going to be Sunday, December 6th from 5 to 8, rain or shine. Almost put snow up down there, but I know it doesn't snow here. We have seven stops on the tour, and you can go at your leisure. It's like an open house. And um, the Oldsmar Historical Society, the Women's Club of Oldsmar, and Top of the Bay Garden Club will be selling tickets. It's $5. I mean, it's $10, and some of them uh, are going to use some of the profits for a fundraiser for them. And I'll tell you more next month. You know, I just want to just save the date. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, uh -huh. Jerry. Anybody else on this side of the room? Anybody on this side of the room? Yep. Loretta? I saw another hand somewhere. I don't know where. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My, you sure do look colorful tonight, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, I must say. <laughs> you can give me that jacket when you get through. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of things. Uh, I was in the library today. Are y'all familiar at all with the garden room mm -hmm. that's in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, I was in there today, and I don't know why I never looked at it, but may, I guess I looked at it a while back and forgot about it. But there's a plaque as you go in the door to the right, and it says, Plants and Garden Furniture Provided by the Oldsmar Garden Club. There's never been an Oldsmar Garden Club in Oldsmar, to my knowledge, and I've been here since the 60s. It's top of the Bay Garden Club. So I was thinking since the millennium is coming next year, maybe the city could update that or maybe just take the last line off and put top of the Bay Garden Club because that's who we are. We're not Oldsmar Garden Club. <laughs> We've been referred to as the Tampa Garden Club before, so. <laughs> but uh, if, if y'all could consider that, we'd appreciate it. Like I say, with the millennium coming, we've spruced it up. We've taken care of the plants and stuff and repotted them and stuff. And then on, as you go in on the left-hand side, there's a hand towel dispenser there, and it's completely rusted out. It's been there for a long time, I'm sure, but it's completely rusted, and it really looks bad when you walk in there. You know, to be representing the city, it should look a little better. It was made by uh, <clears throat> Georgia Pacific, and I don't think they're around anymore. Maybe they are. But uh, maybe if they could take a look at that and replace it with something, because it really looks bad when you walk in there. So uh, if y'all could consider that, we'd appreciate it. And uh, maybe we can work out something with a garden club. I don't know. But like I say, with the Millennium next year, I think it would look better to have that whole room in there look up to par and make it look nice. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I saw a hand. Yep. Uh, the one behind you. Yep. In the Tan jacket. Mr. Mayor and Council, my name is Paul Jackson. I live at 18042 Java Isle Drive in Tampa. Uh, I'm here to respectfully request that the first item on your agenda, the recommendation for the award for a lab services contract, be pulled for additional discussion due to what I think is a discrepancy in the uh, award points. Okay. Would you like me to? Go on and explain. No, that's fine. Okay. We were kind of aware of this, so that's fine. And we'll address it when we get to the consent docket. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Yep. Are you a tag team? Oh. <laughs> Security. <laughs> <laughs> Only if we can trade jackets. <laughs> oh. I don't think I'm honored enough to wear your jacket. <laughs> My name is Tony Gross, 711 Satin Leaf Avenue, and to begin tonight's brief ceremony is Richard Hunt, and he will give a brief uh, history of the background of the Purple Heart flag. The Purple Heart decoration was originally designed by George Washington. It was for enlisted troops that had performed way above and beyond. They wouldn't let him make them officers at the time because it took money they didn't have. So he designed uh, something that went on the uniform to indicate that these people went way above and beyond. There are three known recipients. The book that was logged in has been lost. Someday we hope that it'll surface. There may be more. It went into disuse, was reinvented by Douglas MacArthur in 1932. Currently it's for those that are wounded or killed in combat. Wounds, two kinds, the ones you can see, the ones that you can't. The ones that you can see 
and we've seen some horrible examples of that. Sometimes are really tough to deal with, but the hardest ones are the ones that you can't. I feel like I'm kind of home here. This is my second home. Thank <laughs> y'all for that. We have a Purple Heart flag that uh, is given to entities that really go out of their way to represent the combat wounded veterans. This particular flag is one of a kind. There was a request made honoring one of our fallen. This is one of those wounds that's the hard one you can't see and it's the family. Tony Gross and her husband lost their son. This flag was made for Oldsmar for all the things that have been done here, all the honors that have been given, who and what you are and what this community is all about. It says Oldsmar. There's no other place like it. And this is a single flag that was made specially for here. This is to be displayed wherever you feel is the appropriate place in silent memory, unspoken, of Frankie Gross and all the other combat wounded veterans. So it's with a great deal of honor and pride and privilege that we come before this body today and do exactly that. We are presenting you with that flag. Thank you for that honor. Thank you. And because I so love a good ambush, I'm going to come in just a sec. Because I so love a good ambush, we have something else. And Mayor, you're being charged with delegating wherever it needs to to find the appropriate place. Now, if you would be so kind as to show the audience what that is. I'm just going to keep you all in line. In closing, I'd like to thank Richard Hunt. Richard Hunt, with the Military Order of the Purple Heart, contacting the right company, making all this happen tonight. Without his valuable assistance, we might not be here with this magnificent Purple Heart flag. I'd also like to thank my neighbor, friend, and hero. Come on up, Mark. <laughs> Combat wounded U.S. Army veteran Mark Brill. He has been my source of inspiration, often telling me, no, don't do that. <laughs> if you have to think about it twice, don't do it. <laughs> He's always on target with the correct advice, and I actually listen to what he says most of the time. <laughs> and you've heard me say this time and time again, and I do mean it. I'm blessed to live in this community, Oldsmar, 
you, my city council, all of you have supported Craig and me since our only son's death, Frank. You stood with us as we've worked together producing and hosting four ceremonies that honored our Gold Star families. And there is a Gold Star family here, if you would stand up, please. That's Jeanette and Bill who are here tonight. And remembering our fallen. Of course, the first one began as a total washout, but ended <laughs> up being the most meaningful as those 150 individuals endured torrential rain and wicked lightning to remember the fallen. Thanks to all of you, and now with this emblem, we are Old Smart, a proud Purple Heart City. And, and I'm going to recognize some veterans, of course. You know, most of them, Frank. Where's Frank? Stand up, Frank. <laughs> and Mel. Mel, can you stand up, please? These are our Purple Heart wounded. And Earl, right back here. And, of course, Richard. And, of course, my neighbor, Mark. Wade Saborin with Heartstrings for Heroes. Stand up, please. <laughs> Uh, and Olga, who lost her husband almost a year ago, Guadalcanal and Purple Heart recipient. <laughs> and in closing, I'm as an expression sure. of our gratitude, and I made sure this was okay to do, I asked Jerry, we'd like to present each of you with this token of our appreciation, thanks to edible arrangements. You better get the preacher Ooh, and nice. Richard. Oh. The preacher and Richard, come on up. Stand up. While they're doing that, uh, you need to kind of come over this way a little bit, and Tony, delegate that to somebody else. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony. Stand by your husband. That's a great place. <laughs> the Military Order of the Purple Heart Special Recognition Award is bestowed with great pride to Craig and Tony Gross for your participation and support in the Purple Heart Memorial Unveiling Ceremony and Reception, Zephyr Hill, Florida, August 7, 2015, presented by the Patriot members of East Pasco Chapter 705, Zephyr Hills, Florida, Military Order of the Purple Heart USA. This is just a token of the many things that you guys do I'm sure you have plenty of wall space. <laughs> yes, he's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> My son was buried in Arlington, section 60, grave site number 8311, on 19 August 2011. It was his birthday. He was buried the very same hour that he was born, mm -hmm. with full military honors, which he requested that we not do, but he didn't have anything to say about it at the time. <laughs> about a month after his internment in Arlington, I woke up late at night and the song came to me that I'd like to sing on this guitar that was given to me by Art Strings for Heroes, which is an organization that I've joined with Wade here. And uh, they give guitars to soldiers all over the United States of America who are suffering from post traumatic stress, and most of them are Purple Heart recipients. So, I'm just going to sing an abbreviated version of this song. We, we were very fortunate. I had a publisher in Nashville that called me and, and purchased this song. And today I got a call from a movie studio in California that wants a copy of the song. We don't know what's going to happen with it, but God is, you know, I, I say this all the time. My son gave all, but he's still here.
I remember soldiers at my door. Said your son won't be here. I never knew how much I missed my son. Until they buried him in our There's a many a hero buried there. And wait for the movie. That's awesome, and thank you so much for everybody that came tonight, and we're proud to be a Purple Heart City, and we'll be proud to have the flag right behind us. We have the poll, and we'll put that up at the next meeting, so thank you for everybody that came out tonight. Um, does anybody else wish to address the council? Seeing no one, we'll close the Citizens Open Forum. I'll give you a second if you would like to head out. It's going to get really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is the Mayor's Minute. Uh, I'll make it brief. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody that came out and was part of the BMX ribbon cutting last Friday, October 16th. Thank you to those that participated and attended. And to the City Council and the race, and congratulations to Vice Mayor McGee. I looked at the tape. You came into my lane and bumped me. <laughs> <laughs> review, uh, but it was great. We were all happy that we made it around the track and didn't fall down. And I got to tell you, all weekend long, I was out there, and the the, the race was the, the talk of the town of us riding down. And uh, I, I was telling Eric this morning at the gym that we definitely have a cool factor on our council. So uh, 
Uh, also, the Gator Nationals, uh, 900 plus participants that rode from 24 countries and 38 states, making it the largest spread and greatest country reach in 15 years of the Gator Nationals. And I'll quote, as Jeff did in his article, that this is deemed the greatest track, BMX track, in the world. So um, we have that right here in Oldsmar. Look forward again February, um, the weekend of the 19th. So they'll be back again, probably bigger and better. Um, if you get a chance to come out, do so. It's fun for the kids and adults. Also today, we are all able to attend the Lockheed Martin ribbon cutting, as we call it, but they call it the switch flipping. And uh, that was great solar panels. It's the largest private solar f panel field, uh, privately funded. Is that correct? Cor yes. The correct term? Privately owned. Privately owned um, solar panel field in the state of Florida. And we were proud to be a part of that this morning and, and proud to have Lockheed Martin hopefully someday as part of the city of Oldsmar. I got to let you know that coming up this weekend, the top of the Bay Oktoberfest at Tampa Bay Downs starts Friday through Sunday. Uh, stop by Saturday at the City Council Beer Tent. We will be working from 11 to 5. I forgot about that. I'll be out there all weekend. So uh, come by and, and see us. Also this coming Saturday, which I need to do, is Free Electronics Chemical Mobile, mobile Collection. Uh, it's at the North Satellite Center uh, from 9 to 2, where you can drop off electronics, computers, uh, old TVs and whatnot up at there. Also, happy Halloweening, Friday, October 30th, 6 to 9 at Ari Olds Park. The Spooky Haunted Trail costume contest. No, I will not be wearing this jacket. Uh, ages 0 through 12 at 6.30. And movie in the park, Monster University at 7.15. That wraps up the Mayor's Minute. Next is the consent docket. We have five items on there. Award the bid for laboratory services. Approve payment to legal counsel. Authorize the city manager to advertise FRFQ for BMX marketing. And management services, number four, waive the bid requirement and award bid for new, new structural uh, firefighting gear from municipal emergency services under the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Contract pound 12-0806L. And then finally approve the tentative agenda for November 3rd. Does anybody wish to pull anything? Mayor, I'd like to uh, pull from the consent docket item number one. All right. Anybody else wish to pull anything? Motion for items two through five. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes five nothing. Thank you. Um, we pulled item number one. Um, Lisa, if you would like to come up maybe and address. I think you ought to hear from Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Yep. You had requested that we pull this? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor and, and Council, uh, my request is based on simply one of the decision-making criteria in the review of the proposals, uh, and that's simply the one based on location of the lab contractor. Uh, in this particular case, the location of the lab is important to the city, uh, in particular for one test that is uh, commonly requested from the wastewater side of the utilities department, and that test requires the samples to be transported to the lab within six hours of the time the sample is taken. So that, that is a valid concern. Uh, in, in our case, I represent Pace Analytical Services Incorporated, uh, which was ranked second in uh, the ter determination of the award points. Uh, and the location criteria is the one that pushed our uh, proposal to second place. Uh, and just to describe the logistics of the situation, uh, the laboratory that was recommended for award is located 0.4 miles from the city's locations. Uh, our laboratory is located 8.1 miles from the city's location. So uh, as you can imagine, the difference of less than eight miles, uh, our, I would contend, uh, has no effect on the performance of the contractor at all. Uh, coupled with the fact that the laboratory contractor is required by the city in this contract to provide all uh, sample pickup services and field sampling as well, which also mitigates the, the difference in the location. Uh, now, the, the real reason why I'm recommending uh, that, that that item be reconsidered uh, is also because of the price. Uh, if the city goes forth with awarding this contract, uh, to the other laboratory, uh, over the term of the contract, the resultant losses will be approximately $50,000. That's the difference between our bids. So based on that, I'm simply requesting that that criteria be reviewed and reconsidered. 
Thank you, Mr. Thank Jackson. You. Lisa? Director of Public Works. Um, just to give you a little background, it is in the memo. The breakdown is 30% based on the price, 25% based on location and distance from facilities in Oldsmar, 35% based on the company history, structure, qualifications, 5% references, and 5% ability to serve. The reason this is important, the reason for considering all of these criteria in this selection is laboratory services, they do all of our analysis that is required by FDEP and EPA. Those are very important to the function of our different facilities. They keep us in compliance. If we're out of compliance with the regulators, we can get in serious trouble. So we don't want to just award strictly on price. We want to make sure that we're working with a qualified lab. That's why we consider that. And proximity is really important to us when we consider not just the test that Paul was referring to, but also when we consider emergency services. And I'll take you back to when we had the water main break, for example. SAL set, came in as soon as we had it fixed, which was on a Sunday. They were in here with their staff. They were right here and helping us. And we were able to drop things off. They worked with us, having people come in later to make sure they were checking on these samples. And it, you know, running a Bactese test, it has a 30 hour hold time. The test itself takes 18 hours. And in order to lift a boil water notice, you have to have two clear tests. Having that kind of proximity to the lab and being able to drop off samples and get to them and is very important to us. It's an important criteria. Also, to give you a little history, SAL has been doing the laboratory services for the city for over 30 years. They ha and this is the first time that, I mean, we've always used this criteria, or at least as long as I've been here, and longer than that, because I know John was using it before. Um, but this is the first time that they were not also the low bidder. They were the second lowest bidder if you just look at price. One thing I do want to point out, though, about location, if you go through all of the accredited analytes and the different locations, over 50% of the analytes that PACE would do for us actually have to be sent to Ormond Beach. They will not be processed in the Tampa facility. We went ahead and left the ranking based on the Tampa facility, but there are a lot of the items that will be analyzed in Ormond Beach, which means that once they pick them up here, they take them to their facility, then they're shipping them another 160 miles to the other coast in order to complete the analysis. So even though we base the distance and the scoring strictly on the Tampa location, that is not where the bulk of the tests will be completed they will be completed elsewhere. Uh, SAL does all of their testing here in town. The only two analytes that are sent out are asbestos and dioxin. Um, and so all of the rest of the analysis is done right here over on Bayview. Um, that's and is the Ormond Beach, the testing, is that still part of the six hour window? I mean, it's actually, what's the six hours? Um, well, that, is, that test they do conduct right here. They do that right here in Tampa. That is the, uh, they look at total, they do fecal, total coliform, and um, I think it's E. coli. So you look at those different biological components, and if they're present when you do a line clearance, then it means you can't, you have to continue the boil water notice. If they're absent, and then you do a second test and they're absent again, then you can lift the boil water notice. But those tests are completed here in the Tampa location. But in general, just all of our testing, which is required by the state and by EPA, a, a big chunk of it, over 50% of it, will be shipped to Ormond Beach. And just to, so I'm clear that I heard it correctly, so the, the distance grading was based on the Tampa location. Correct. And do we know where Test America, who also scored a, uh, an 18.75, where they're located, just for reference? Um, I didn't bring that with me. I'm sorry. I mean, I know they're also in that in the Tampa location okay. in in that same area over there in the industrial park near the airport, but I don't know exactly. Okay, but they're within the Tampa area. And then the, the other one that's a 12.5, just for reference, are they? Uh, local? They're over more towards the middle of the state. I believe it was the Lakeland area, or yeah, I don't, but I don't remember exactly where. But it was more towards the middle of the state. And I guess on the when you score the the location, which seems to be really the 
maybe the one thing, one of the things that could make a big difference. Is there a, a, a scale or how is it measured? I mean, six miles or whatever the difference is, eight miles or a little less than seven uh, than eight miles distance. Basically, if they're in the city, they got full scores. City being Oldsmar. Oldsmar, yeah. yeah. Okay. If they are in the city limit, they got they got all of the points for it. Okay. If they were outside of the city, if it was less than ten miles, because that is a reasonable distance, they got seventy five percent. And if they were farther than that, then they got fifty percent. And is that seventy five percent? I assume eighteen point seven five. I don't know. I would yeah, have to. it would be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Math, but not that quick. So, so the, that 18.75 is 75% of the total score. Okay. Correct. I just wanted to get clarification so we mm -hmm. knew. Right. So obviously the other one, 18.75, is within the 75% range as well. Mm -hmm. Questions? Eric, you asked I, me to I, pull I had it. a question. Well, and I pulled it in part from the email we got and also the sure. request. But um, do you have any reason uh, to assume or to feel that PACE analytics would not provide the same adequate service? I mean, is there a history there? Is there some other reason well, than having a familiar comfort level with the current provider? Um, personally, no, there is not. We did call references on them as well, and you can see from the reference score that PACE was lower than than Southern Analytical. Um, it had to do in part with the services that they do provide for some other municipalities. Um, some of their larger clients, they do the bulk of their work in-house. And so PACE is providing a very small portion of their services. They're not providing all of their services, which is what they would be doing for us. And um, another one that we were told by one of the people that we called was related to the scheduling of pickup. Uh, you'd have to, because of the way they do their pickups, you schedule them in advance and you have to coordinate your deliveries or your testing in order so that pickups are done only once or twice a week. We would lose some of the flexibility that we have now, which allows us to just kind of do testing. Do you think that loss of flexibility justifies an additional $10,000? What I feel justifies the additional $10,000 is not, it partly is the flexibility, but it also is the history. It's the history with SAL, their knowledge of all of our processes, their, uh, the way they work with the city. We did not grade anybody down on history for that reason. I mean, we pretty much went strictly off of the information that was submitted to us. But in reality, if we had looked at our personal history with SAL, we could have given them more points for that than we did the other candidates. But we strictly went off of the company history that was provided in the document. We wanted to keep it as factual and as you know, based on what was submitted in the proposals when we were looking at that. I'm trying to find it. What was the breakdown again for percents? 30% uh, for price and complete le completeness of all services. 25% for location and distance of facility from Oldsmar. 35% uh, for company history and structure, qualifications of staff, instrumentation, and other quali qualification information. 5% for references and 5% for ability of after service. Okay. All right. And I don't, you know, I'm not one to judge, but it seems like a lot of, I guess, when you look at the percentage, a lot of percentage of the grading is based on distance. But it's really more than that, is what you're saying, is that it's the flexibility. So, I mean, 25% of it is because, I mean, you could be right here in the city of Oldsmar, or I could be just across the bridge in Safety Harbor, and, you know, that's a huge chunk of points, but it sounds to me like it's a lot of other things, the familiarity, um, you know, the flexibility, um, and, and part of that has to do with the distance maybe, I guess. Um, so, I mean, it just seems like a lot of weight is put on, you know, seven miles in a, in a grading thing when it's really, it seems to me that there's a lot of other factors that you've described that really kind of weigh more um, but really are not considered, I guess, and so. Well, and I guess maybe when we were doing the scoring, we maybe should have, factored that more into the company history 
section of this in terms of the scoring than we did. I mean, we just str strictly went off of what was submitted to us in paper when we were looking at company history structure. And that's why if you look at the one um, Florida Spectrum, they were marked down because they actually were not able to provide some of the services they no bid. And so we marked them down for that strictly based on what was submitted to sure. us. And if we had gone and gone more with our personal experience in this section, then those numbers wouldn't have been 35, 35, 35, 28. Those numbers would have been different if but we it, had taken it, in our personal experience and some of these flexibility items, which we felt were reflected in the distance. But, but I mean, do you think it's fair to say that part of that, which rightfully so, is the fact that, as you said, uh, our current provider has been with us for a long time. So I don't know that that's, you know, apples and apples in terms of how you judge someone uh, just simply because they haven't been in the mix. Uh, that's why I asked whether there's a reason to believe that their service would be somehow um, less efficient than the current provider. And, and it kind of sounds like not really other than the flexibility of when we lay out our schedule and, you know, it might require us to rework our schedule. I just can't help but look at it. And I'm, I'm curious, do you know, and this might be a fair question to ask you because you may not know the answer off the top of your head, but do you know um, what we were paying prior to this bid? Well, let me... So has our provider gone up, our current provider gone up? Not really, because what has, the way this bid is, it's actually based on unit prices. We put in what we believe are the estimated quantities of what we are going to use. We'll say 52 weeks of this, but we might only use 48, because if we are not discharging to the bay, then you're not using the effluent analysis. Or if it's um, in the ASR well, which there's a couple of components that are new to this bid that were not in the last bid. The last bid went out before we had the ASR well and all of the components that are in here now for the ASR well. It also did not have all of the correct information in there for the RO plant because the last bid went out before the RO plant was actually up and operational. So the unit prices that we have from SAL are pretty much the same. It's just that the quantities that we have put in here and the different categories are slightly different because we've added the ASRO and we've added more for the RO plant that was not in there in the last bid. So fair to say that it's not necessarily an increase in the unit cost, rather the volume of work being asked for. So it is higher, but it, you know. Correct, and and then odds are we are not going to spend the total amount this year. Because, again, like I said, it's based on if we discharge to the bay every single month, if we are injecting into the ASR well all the time. You know, so we always bid based on absolute worst case scenario in order to get kind of a maximum number. Um, since I have been here, we have never used the maximum number. So the way it ends up running, the contract runs based on the unit prices. And certain tests but, are but comparatively that everybody bid on the same correct anticipated number of units so with the exception of one down. line item that there was a problem with which i did get clarification from all of the bidders on because there was confusion about how many tests were actually incorporated and that's in one of the attachments in the, in the first but no. but i mean presumably if it's less it's going to be less with everybody correct so okay. yeah okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So that would also mean that the increase in price would be less if, 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 if everything is proportional. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it all depends on what kind of tests have to be run, the frequency of them, and yeah, so it. Well, my question is, is, is that you said that the flexibility, and that sounds, you know, I mean, it's very reasonable, but what my concern is, is the lack of flexibility in the event of an emergency, in the event that we have a break, in the event that we need somebody right away. And so it, does that also, um, does that play into effect with PACE? Do you, 
Well, do we I mean, I mean, I, all I can again that goes back to the history, which like you know, you know, you we know history, we have right. that with SAL. I cannot speak to that with Pace. I've never been in that situation with them. They might do a great job with it, but I have never experienced that. But that's why when we went to company history and we graded that, we strictly went on what was given to us. We did not include our personal history with it. I just know that that does add a comfort level to the staff. Right. And um, they, I, I mean, you know, we've, we've had really good experience with SAL when we were starting up the RO plant. They came out and they were helping us with issues that we had going on. We go there when we have problems. They always, it, it, we have a great working relationship with them, which definitely leads to comfort with the staff. But because we don't know the other labs, that's why we didn't, go into that in that history grading because that wouldn't have been fair sure, that to would them. Be biased yeah, that would have exactly been penalized because they've never been a vendor. Right, of exactly. And, I, I agree and with that. we can't we can't say Pace wouldn't do that. I mean they might do that. They might be great at it. We so we can't Right. Okay. We can't really weigh that in when we're doing this. That's just personal experience speaking about the comfort of what that we have in the staff's experience with SAL and you know the fact that they've been here growing with us and well no i think that's important and it is a public safety issue it is mm -hmm. EPA, it's the government i mean all these things are are for our greater good Can I right. have a quick question is there a justification behind why they're significantly higher if they're only 0.4 miles away i mean you would think if another company's having to outsource to ormond beach that their cost would be higher i mean do we know why there would be I don't think they're there. outsourcing it's just their lab is over there is that correct yeah their, their lab is lab. over there one of their they have close to the city and within the city limits that the cost might be lower because as their client I mean we're across the street so well their unit prices have been the same for like pretty much five six years so I, I mean I really don't know the pricing or what overhead people have um, you know I mean you look at the other two and they're considerably higher so it's it i really i can't speak to that i'm sorry and it's probably built into the unit price and who knows how that's derived. right do you know if uh, i'm sorry Mr. okay do you, do you know if the last time this went out for bid was there someone else who was actually low bidder uh price wise and the same kind of scenario we were looking at today now the last time um sal was the low bidder as well they were the they were the low bidder and obviously closest and yeah so i mean we went through the same routine five years ago but they were the low bidder so it was you know so the length it, of the contract it's two five years five. with uh, three one-year options for renewal right. okay do we know if pace submitted at that time as well i'd have to go back and look i do not know do you know if Pace submitted at that time? No, sir. Pace did not. Okay, thank you. It's just you can understand the struggle with oh, the difference yeah. because to me, I understand and respect how important it is to have that comfort level. Mm -hmm. I don't know if if there's language within the bid that requires a certain uh, service level uh, during a emergency event was there I'm not sure I don't remember I'd have to go back and double check um, you know but I do want to say about the bid all of this was in the bid from the very beginning and pace did not protest this breakdown at the very beginning of the bid the, this information is not they new. felt like they won the bid that, that's why they didn't protest then I mean you know candidly I understand the comfort level, and I think there's a lot of importance to that, but sometimes there's too much of a comfort and, you know, a lack of willingness to change a routine uh, may cost us another $10,000 a year. That seems expensive. I'm just, you know. Um, and, and I tend to agree with you. I mean, the, and it's not, you know, it's ten thousand dollars on a ninety thousand dollar contract, so it's not insignificant difference. Percentage, right? Wise, correct. Percentage. It's, you start to add those up, and that becomes, you know. And in, in, in my mind, I'm gra grasping with the same thing: is okay, it's ten, but at, at what point does it does that become a factor? Is it twelve thousand? Is it fifteen thousand? You know, that if there was that big of a difference, when, as you said, it's what twelve percent. 
roughly? It's like 11, 12 percent. 11, 12 percent <laughs> difference. In, but uh, I know, you know Pace Labs. I mean, I've, I had worked with them in the past. So not me personally, but the company I worked for. I know they've been around for a long time. Yeah, you know, and you kind of ask yourself the question of, if this was your company, would you, you know, would you spend another ten thousand dollars of your money um, for that comfort level? I, you know, I don't think that I would. Um, just being brutally honest, and I'm mm -hmm. a huge fan of what you guys do. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, but. Is there any performance well, I, clauses? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, are, any, are there any performance clauses in it that if they don't meet? There are criteria in there and requirements about turnaround time and getting results back to us and after services and all of that is in, in the agreement. So is, is there a the termination? Is there an out? Or do, would we go through the whole two years? No, we can, we can um, terminate based on cause, if need be, based on what's in the bid document. Yeah. Because on the flip side, I completely and totally respect what you know, Council Member Seidel um, said, but on the flip side, I've bid against companies for 20 years, and low bid is not always the best. And, and I don't know, it was the people that did the BMX track, were they low bid? Yep. What happened there? Yeah. You know, so you can't... Oh, you no, can't. I, I mean, I agree with that, but it, I, I don't know that that completely applies here. What really seems to have blown them out of the water is the, you know, the, the difference of about less than eight miles. Um, you know, had they, I know the grading is the grading, and they knew where their office was when they bid, so they knew they were only going to get 75%. I'm sure they knew the incumbent was going to bid, and they knew they were going to get 100. But, you know, if that wasn't a factor, you know, they, and they got the full thing, they'd, they, you know, they'd have 99 points and be the lowest. Yeah, bidder. but eight miles, when you're, com when you're talking about things as important as testing for our water, is testing for our health and our citizens, eight miles, I mean, eight miles is a long way. Well, so if you're walking. Yeah. But it's not when you're in a vehicle. In rush hour traffic, if there's a up, wreck, if there's, you well, know. six hours. I mean, know. Linda, come on. I mean, well, I'm just saying that's the way the criteria is set up. I mean, I think that up. the biggest issue, it, it, which if I'm. But it's not the biggest issue. The biggest the, the, issue is more they're comfortable. Yeah. It's a flexibility issue. It's not as much a distance issue. Right. But it's both. But it makes sense but the way the well. scale set up but that it's that's both. the way the points come out. Right. Well, I think the comfortability, I, I mean, I agree with staff. I think the comfortability factor is very important. I really do. Um, because I've seen low bid contracts fall apart every all the time, and and I, thirty years. And I've also that's seen a, that's companies. A track record. And I've also seen companies who do work for the same organization for multiple years and get very comfortable that's and true. less competitive. No, that's true. No, that's a good bids. point. I agree and with so, you there. You know, there's an argument to make. Right. No, way. I agree with you there. I do. I just wanted to show the other the side because there is another side to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's the reason I asked the question. Is there a reason to believe in the due diligence? that PACE would not provide adequate service. And, and her, another point is, is they haven't raised their actual unit price. So it's not just the comfortability. They haven't raised their unit price. What happened is another company came in at a lower price. So for a, however they can do that, I don't know. Which is if they didn't bid last time, you know, that could also mean, I mean, we go back and forth. It could also mean we've been paying too much for a long time. I mean, you can go back and forth. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just being honest. It's like you look at it, it's a lot of money. Um, I support staff in, in these types of decisions, sure. but I also question them, you, you know. You have to ask. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. No, oh, they, no, we're doing our job because we're looking at the Are these just fairs. location offices or where are they, these companies headquartered? Is SAL headquartered here in Oldsmore? SAL is headquartered and all their lab facilities is here in Oldsmore on Bayview. Um, PACE has the lab in Tampa and a lab in two other labs in Florida and then labs all over the country. I'm not sure where their home office is located. No, Minneapolis. I just, I have to and say, I, and I'm not so. familiar with business here within our well, city that has been I loyal mean, and doing good listen, work. Yeah. They listen, may not I have be the no, lowest bidder, but I have to say that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree. That's not lost to me. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why the points come into the way they do. Sure. I think, hmm. you know, the people who pay taxes here like to see the money spent here. Especially you know. on something as important as water. A company that just because they weren't lucky enough to be built next door to the, the plant, you know, should be disqualified. But if we do have a company that's supported the staff, they feel comfort, mm -hmm. comfortable, they haven't raised their unit price, they're not coming in at a higher unit price, and they're located headquartered, not just a lab, here within our city, I mean, I feel like, end of discussion. I, I mean, I agree. I'm afraid we're going to see another BMX 
catastrophe. Well, I don't want well, to go down that. It could I mean, happen. It's ten thousand dollars, and it's it a could lot happen. of money. And but, I think, but at least it's not a ten-year contract. It's a two-year contract. If they continue to deliver, then let's revisit again. Give Pace another opportunity. And I, I, is there, are there any other labs in the city of Oldsmar? To do this type of work? I mean, so it's almost an unfair advantage that, I mean, why would you, I mean, Look, if this possible, why would you even bid if. It's not an unfair advantage if they've been low bid for 30 years and this is the first time they're not. Sure. Wow. That's a great point. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not an unfair point. advantage. And you but know, then that's think, where it goes into the history, which becomes then an unfair advantage to the others, so. And I think the mere fact that we're having this debate, I think when people look to go bid in Oldsmar, then perhaps there's a notice that we're looking at the contracts oh, yeah. and the bids. Definitely. Not lowest Carter. bid efforts in any I mean, business. It should never I'm not be suggesting sure. that our staff doesn't, because I know they do. Mm -hmm. I don't have a, uh, any question as it relates to their due diligence. But when the numbers look so different, and you say, okay, it's really not ten thousand dollars. Assuming all goes well, it's fifty thousand dollars. And you know those kinds of numbers. Well, she also said she also contract. said historically they overbid, they over. So it's most of these numbers are going to be down. So more yeah, than likely, be it's down going to be less. Right, but, but, right, but, but because not of, to say yeah. it's going to be up fifteen thousand or anything okay. else. If but historically need, it's, it's higher and it goes down. Maybe we need to look at what we have been paying every year based off what the tests were, because we don't really know. We know what maybe we approved on a bid five years ago, but maybe we should look at okay, did we pay ninety thousand or was it only seventy thousand? You know, because right now we're looking off of a bid price. Yeah. But we're not really looking at utilization, so maybe we look at that and then revisit this. I mean, I don't know because right now we've been. Talking I, about I don't for have a, while. a motion to make to change the direction of. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I wanted to discuss it and find out the, how the, the decision process that went into this. And and you're right, if you know, if it's ten thousand now, it's a, if it goes for the five year that we've done before, even though it's a two year, that, might, that is fifty thousand dollars difference. You know. Um, but that's not based on utilization. Like right. that's oh, I know, but it's we should look at utilization. But it's proportionate. All they'll all go down. You know, all the they'll all typically theoretically go down. I don't think ten thousand dollars is a whole lot to pay for the quality of water for fourteen thousand residents. I don't even if it comes to that. Yep. I don't know. Any thoughts, Bruce? Well, yeah, <laughs> it would be good to have a motion. Um, well, I mean, you you discussed it. I think very thoroughly. Uh, just on the price factor, I think that um, if the bid from Southern Analytical was like $100,000, I would say, well, that's just that was kind of my question. way out there, you know, which would not have been outrageous because out of the four bids, two of them were over $100,000. Right, yeah. So I think uh, given the numbers that we have, it's been obvious from the beginning of the discussion that they were not the low bidder this time, but all things considered, that's uh, still the recommendation that the bid be awarded to Southern Analytical Laboratories. I mean, the history, if they did it based on history, they awarded everyone the 35 percent. So it's like, if you really accounted for history, probably everyone else would have gotten 20 or 20 or 0 percent. I mean, at the end of the day, Sal might have had well, higher actual points. history, actual yeah. knowledge, right? Instead yeah. of so, the I mean, facts in front of her. There was some fairness in play there, based off that factor, because you knew that you've only worked with Sal. So, is that a motion? I did a continued discussion. Do we want to give Mr. Jackson another opportunity? Uh, I'll give you a brief second to. I just want to address. Here, come on. Thanks. So much for coming. Thank you. Thank Thank you. I would just like to address a couple of the concerns that Lisa expressed because in this industry, she's absolutely right. They are really valid concerns. Uh, timeliness, service, responsiveness, especially after hours in a business that never shuts down, you know, water. Uh, Pace Analytical is a national lab company. No, we're not based here in Oldsmar. Uh, but we are the only environmental lab company in Florida and in the nation that has a true emergency response service for water utilities. It's a 24-7 toll-free number and email service. You talk to a live person. And if you get shut down in the middle of the night, we come. Uh, the concern about the proximity of the labs, again, is also a valid concern. I, I believe Lisa mentioned that uh, PACE requires its clients to schedule on a set schedule like twice a week. That is only for a client that is in a very remote location. For a client like Oldsmar that's literally down the street, 
We come as often as the city wants, whenever the city wants, seven days a week. Uh, as an example, I would include a reference, uh, City of Sanford in East Orlando. We pick up uh, at, at Charlie's plant seven days a week on his schedule, not ours. And that's, that's all I wanted to offer. Thank you. Thank you. What's the next step? We need a motion. A motion to award the bid to someone, bid. and then we to award the bid to someone, and we either award the bid to. Um, I make a motion to approve staff's recommendations and award the bid. I'll second that motion to Southern Analytical. That's a recommendation. I second that motion and a second. Any other discussion on this item? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's a five nothing. Thank you. You, Lisa. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank and thank you, you for coming. We do appreciate your input. Next item is the City of Oldsmar presentation of the Employee Service Awards. Thank you, Mayor. I'm very pleased this evening. Uh, we have two awards. We go, we're going by seniority, and the first award is presented to David Young. Yay! <laughs> seniority. <laughs> now I see that uh, Jennifer and Ben are here also. You, and uh, do you bring anybody else with you? My mother-in-law, Sally. <laughs> we should probably have them come up here too, don't you think? No, the mother-in-law has to come too. Come on. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. <laughs> service award and recognition for 15 years of service to the city of Oldsmar presented to David Young, 2000 to 2015. Now, there's a check that go goes along with this, so you take that. And uh, I was I was just curious. Um, Ben, were you here five years ago when your dad got his 10-year award? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that you were here also, but I didn't think you were uh, as tall as you are. <laughs> Anyhow, glad that uh, you came tonight also. So David is a firefighter paramedic with Oldsmar Fire Rescue, and uh, he's served in that capacity for 15 years now. And he has, uh, over the years and uh, still today, has uh, contributed to many other things to the betterment of the Oldsmar community. Uh, David and Jennifer both have worked on uh, Relay for Life and uh, over the years and made big commitments to that. And most of the time it was fun, I think. But uh, <laughs> that's uh, one, one example. And uh, David is also a member of the Firefighters Pension Board of Trustees. And you've done that for several years also. I don't know. How long has that been? About 12 years. I knew it was a long time, yes. <laughs> and uh, you, you don't get any extra pay for that either, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. <laughs> and more recent, well, those, those are, uh, you know, that's current. You're still on the board. And then also, I know, uh, I believe one of the other things is you have some involvement with uh, students at St. Petersburg College. Is that right? Yes. So briefly, could you just kind of explain what that program is and what you do there or with St. Petersburg College and the students? Any students that come in for uh, ride-alongs with the fire department, I precept them and make sure they get checked off properly and do the proper things they need to be doing. So they, they ride with us at the fire department, run calls, run the calls. So. These are students who uh, are endeavoring to become EMTs or paramedics, right? Yeah, yes. So... Uh, through our participation, you're kind of overseeing what they're doing here, then uh, it's kind of like some on-the-job or training or before they're out on their own and have a license. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, um, through the fault of no one, we are a little bit behind schedule tonight, I think. So I just want to uh, take this opportunity to congratulate you on your 15th anniversary, quite a milestone, let you know we appreciate the efforts that you do and um, all those side jobs too. <laughs> we wanted to recognize that uh, that's part of what you do and have made contributions to make Oldsmar a better community. So we're happy we can recognize you tonight. Congratulations.
Okay, the second award this evening is uh, presented to Janice Pierce. Come on up, Janice. <laughs> And uh, who did you bring with you tonight? Um, my great grandson and my best, better half, I guess you could say, in <laughs> 38 years. Well, they probably want to come up here with you, though. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Cynthia and Gage. Okay. Great grandson? Uh uh. Yeah. Uh uh. They... <laughs> we won't say it. <laughs> We're glad that you came Abby tonight. Will. <laughs> So Janice uh, serves as our maintenance supervisor in public works overseeing streets and stormwater. The service award is in recognition for 10 years of service to the city of Oldsmar presented to Janice Pierce 2005 to 2015. You take that and I, th I think you already got the check. <laughs> it's already spent even. Well, I know that uh, actually your anniversary was in June, wasn't it? Um, August. Okay. Well, I knew it was sometime in the summer. <laughs> August 15th. And I, I, I know this is not the reason that we did not present the award to you in August, but um, the fact that uh, these past 10 years, and if you've worked in public works and uh, streets and stormwater, but this year, 2015, we did kind of have an unusual summer. Is that right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Lots of rain. <laughs> yes. That's very true. So in addition to recognizing you tonight for your 10th anniversary and 10 years of service, I want to also just uh, tell you once again that we appreciate the efforts that you and the folks that work with you uh, put in this summer. It was certainly a very unusual rain event. And considering uh, the effects, uh, even here on some of our neighbors in the Tampa Bay area and what they experienced, I think Oldsmar fared very well. And I just wanted to acknowledge that this evening also and thank you and let you know we appreciate those efforts as well. And it's because, of course, what, uh, what y'all are doing year-round, 12 months out of the year, in maintaining the stormwater system and streets and sidewalks as well. So, happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> he squished back there. There he is. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Our next item is our presentation of the Homer Brunson Award, Schreckengoss Award, and our recipient is sick this evening, and so we will postpone that to our next meeting, which moves us to our eighth item, presentation of proclamation of Friends of the Library, and I'll go ahead and read that. Friends of the Library Week, whereas Friends of the Library raise money that enables our library to move from good to great, providing the resources for additional programming, much needed equipment, support for children's summer reading, and special events throughout the year. And whereas the work of the Friends highlights uh, an ongoing basis, the fact that our library is the cornerstone of the community, providing opportunities for all to engage in the joy of lifelong learning <clears throat> and connect with the thoughts and ideas of others from ages past to the present. And whereas the Friends understand the critical importance of well-funded libraries and advocate to ensure that our library gets the resources needed to provide a wide variety of services to all ages, including access to print and electronic, electronic materials, along with expert assistance in research, readers, advisory, and children's services. And whereas the Friends' gift of their time and commitment to the library sets an example for all in how volunteerism leads to positive civic engagement and the betterment of our community. Now, therefore, I, Doug Beavis, Mayor of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, do hereby proclaim the week of October 18th to 24th, 2015, and Friends of the Library Week in the City of Oldsmar, and urge everyone to join the Friends of the Library and thank them for all they do to make our library and community so much better, dated this 20th day of October 2015. Doug Beavis, Mayor, and I'm presenting this to you, Orchid. Dan. Everybody. Everybody. Yes. Yes. Because we all work together. And I just I wanna make sure, sure, I sure. wanna make one comment. We've come a long way 
baby. It's not mm -hmm. <laughs> 75, 76, when the city of Rosemar gave us $200 for books. Wow. It didn't include yeah. salaries. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do you think you've raised over the years? Oh gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> Millions. We've raised a lot. We have a book sale November 14th. Please come out and support us. And you can drop off uh, books the day before at the library. Just saw my jacket on camera. It is pretty loud. <laughs> Making me dizzy. Dusty wears that thing all the time. I know he does. <laughs> is it stinky? It's got it's got a hint of dusty in it. <laughs> um, our next item is the city attorney. Yes, item number nine on your agenda is the second and final reading and public hearing of ordinance 2015-15. I'll read that ordinance by title only. Ordinance 2015-15, an ordinance to the City of Oldsmar, Florida, amending Section 50-53 of the Code of Ordinances to increase the permitted frequency of garage sales at a residential location and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2015-15 by title only. Need a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Oh, it is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to address the public? Loretta, have you had your garage sale? <laughs> Not yet. I'm getting there. Uh, Loretta Wyant, 601 Shore Drive East. I did want to make a comment about the BMX ribbon cutting. I went to that and it was very, very nice. Kudos to the city for putting awesome. that on. Very nicely done. I was very proud of you. And we had our congressman there. Yes. Uh, and as far as the... Uh, you should have raced down the hill. <laughs> no, no. I had fun <laughs> watching you guys. You came in third. Shame on you. <laughs> Awesome. Nice. Out of order. Out of order. <laughs> You're first. <laughs> I didn't come in last. Ooh. Well, she did get beat I by a girl. I knew we would get to that at it. some point. I made it. This one, so she should have won. Hey, my money was on her. <laughs> I told everybody, put your money on Gabby. That, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. Y'all did a very good job. Yeah. And on this ordinance, uh, the residents of Lillesmar, I want to thank you for bringing it into the 21st century. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Florida. Anybody else wish to address the public? Close the public hearing. Uh, if no, no other discussion, please call the roll. Councilmember Seidel? Yes. Councilmember Saraki? Yes. Vice Mayor McKee? Yes. Councilmember North? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Second and final reading of Ordinance 2015-15, amending Section 50-53 of the Code to allow four garage sales per year is passed with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before item 10, I would like to uh, just take a very uh, short period of time and introduce Kevin Cox, uh, who is our new Public Works Administrator. Oh, oh nice. So, <clears throat> Lisa might have a few other things to say. Well, I just want to introduce him real quick. This is Kevin Cox. He joined us on August 31st. It was his first day, and I'll let him tell you a little bit about himself. He's uh, taken over as public works administrator in street, stormwater, and fleet. So, Good. welcome. Um, nothing really to say, but uh, <laughs> spent uh, almost 20 years with Pinellas County and their um, highway department, uh, kind of supervising street, stormwater, asphalt. MS4 program, just brought that over here instead and with a better organization. Awesome. There you go. We like that. Oh. Hey. Is he going to sing the song you told him? Oh, yeah. Told him all <laughs> Forgot the lyrics. Oh. So I'm sorry. <laughs> all good. You'll fit right in. I ran into Kevin and Lisa today at Cuban Breezes for lunch, and he's a Volkswagen man. <laughs> he's got a 64 68, 68 square 
Squirt gun. Oh, great. So we were comparing, <laughs> comparing pictures of our Don't encourage him, please. <laughs> hey, you're the one with the jacket on. <laughs> oh, yeah. That came in third. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, sir. And we hope to see you at your 5 and your 10 and your 15 and your 20. I should be here. Yeah, good deal. I talked to her about that. But. <laughs> Welcome, Kevin. And Welcome. just so you know, the, the, the bids that go out from the public works, they don't normally have this much discussion. <laughs> it's not a normal thing. He's over there thinking, oh, yeah. oh my God, yeah, what did I get my soldier to do? $10,000, really? Yeah. Welcome, Kevin. Welcome. <laughs> Item 10, approved State Street Homes replat on Clarendon Street. And uh, I'd like to ask our planning redevelopment director, Marie Dauphiné, to give you a little more background on this replat. I'm Aaron Council, Marie Dauphiné, planning and redevelopment director. Um, this is a replat of a 0.76 acre lot. Right now, there's a single family home on the lot, and the applicant is um, proposing to um, plot the lots into four single family homes. So they'll all meet the requirements of the R2 district. And uh, the plan has gone through conformity review and we've received letters of no objection. So we've recommended approval and the planning board also concurred with staff's recommendation. Thank you. Any questions? Um, the applicant is here if you have any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Can we discuss? Yeah, need a motion. Like a motion? <laughs> yeah. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Motion second. I would just say, um, I know Brian's here with Davis Views and I love everything you do. I just, I will note that I am sad because it is an original historic home from the Abernathy family oh, that just... will be torn down. So yeah, it's the one on Clarendon right yeah. behind the hotel is the mm -hmm. white one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying but to it picture. It is on a pretty large piece of property um, and unfortunately it's facing a giant parking lot and hotels. So not a lot of... Um, residential home buyers that would be interested in purchasing that original home and have that front view. So, sure. um, but I did want to mention that it is a historic house. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Before it's it gone. probably won't be there for very long. Can you yeah. save some of the stuff for? I'm, I mean, I'm sure they, they did. Yes, the Abernathy family, yeah. so. Yeah. And the applicant, the applicant has quite a history of building yeah. quality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any good other discussion? Yes, that's true. Here in the city, so. Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five nothing. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Ryan. Mayor and Council, the next item, approved facility use agreement with St. Petersburg College. Uh, well, of course, uh, was, uh, I guess their ribbon cutting was kind of old news now. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I think uh, it's probably a good idea we approve this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do have a lot of faith in the college, and uh, you know we're happy that they're in Oldsmar. As you know, the uh, facility is the former senior center right down uh, on the other side of the parking lot from where we're sitting tonight. Uh, the proposed uh, lease with the college is for a two-year period. Um, the city provides the utilities. There is uh, no rent, and basically, uh, you know, we are endeavor. Our the effort is to bring St. Petersburg College to Oldsmar and. Uh, I'm very pleased that we were able to reach this agreement with them. By a separate agreement, uh, the college has offered to uh, split some of the revenues received on the use of this facility, and that would be handled in a separate agreement. So tonight, I do recommend your approval of the facility use agreement with St. Petersburg College for the city-owned property at 127 State Street West. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to respond to those. Thank you. Need a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on this item? No. Nope. I, I mean, I think it's a great thing. I do and too. Mm -hmm. um, in talking to others, you know, that I think the potential is there to make this even a bigger and better program, um, both for St. Petersburg College and Oldsmar and, and North County, um, bleeding over into Hillsborough County, actually. So I think it's a great thing for everybody. So Do they have any BMX courses that, for the mayor? <laughs> 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 oh, he's <laughs> we do. We should practice. What place, what place did I come city in? Versus city. Ahead of me, because you bumped me in front of you. But you oh. said we need a rematch. You still oh. lost to a girl. I don't care. I want a rematch. Dan got beat by two girls. So hey, oh. I want a rematch. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we get crazy, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five nothing. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 12, approve renewal of fire services contract with Pinellas County. 
The uh, current agreement was for a three-year period, expired September 30th. The agreement before you this evening is for five years. In the old agreement, we received $8,000 a year from uh, the county for providing these services. We, along with uh, East Lake Tarpon Special Fire Control District, provide wildfire protection to the Brooker Creek Preserve. And uh, through the efforts of Chief O'Neill, he was successful in uh, having that fee increased to $12,000 a year. And that's uh, what's set forth in this new agreement. And I do recommend its approval. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to respond to those. Wildland Fire Protection Agreement with Pinellas County. Motion. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. Discussion. How often do we fight, have to fight fires out there, Dean? Every time they call us for one. <laughs> 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 I'm going to. It's not very often. <laughs> That's probably Thank goodness. Camera off. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's sick. Several. You know how this works. Uh, Dean O'Neill, Fire and EMS Chief. It uh, depends on the season. Uh, of course, with a rainy season like we had this year, no. Um, in addition to just on uh, the preserve, we also use the uh, funds for this when we build our brush trucks and provide other equipment and training. We use that uh, in different parts of the city, the south areas. Uh, pretty much anywhere you can get a, a, a heavy truck in with a 500 gallons of water. So sometimes yes, a lot, sometimes no, a lot. But we cover the entire preserve, but because of their automatic aid agreement, uh, we could use this just about anywhere in Pinellas County. Is your brush truck done? Uh, no, we currently have one brush truck. It's on a, a loan from the Division of Forestry. We have another one, which is a, a light to medium tactical vehicle, which we're in the process of building. Uh, we'll um, replace the skid unit that's on the truck now, that'll go on the new truck. Probably by the end of the year, we should be able to have that project done, and we'll have another brush truck that should last us uh, 15 plus years. That thing's a honker, too. It is. It's a bigger truck. Uh, it's uh, more more stable, more sturdy, uh, drives and turns better than the one we currently have. Wow. Honker is a firefighting technical term. But it is. <laughs> and what color is it? It's fire engine red. <laughs> well, I have to give kudos to Dean because um, I asked Bruce, how in the world did we get $4,000 a year more? And he just said two words, Dean's charm. <laughs> oh. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Dean's charm. That ain't funny, Al. <laughs> <laughs> No other questions? Thank Thanks. you. I was just curious. <laughs> if there's no other questions. The packet is what's making us all goofy. I, yeah, right. Blame it on me again. <laughs> all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Passes five. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron Council, item 13, approved purchase of railing for BMX track from Smith Fence on Pinellas County contract. Um, I know the council, of course, is aware of the issues related to the construction of the BMX track, and particularly the contractor's failure to complete the track as scheduled, and uh, you're aware that the contract was terminated earlier this month. So um, as we were going through that uh, assessment of what had to be done and still meet the deadline for the race last weekend, the major item that was uh, basically next to nothing had been done as of the 1st of September was the railing. Uh, Smith Fence is a contractor and vendor that we have done business with before. They're on the uh, county contract as well. So uh, we asked them to give us, give us a price for fabricating and installing the railing for the track. They're well aware of our deadline. Uh, you may not know that uh, the last sections of railing on the top of the Elite Hill were installed Wednesday morning. <laughs> so they did come through for us uh, with flying colors. The amount of the work in this contract was is $151,176. Um, the amount of this item in the contract that we uh, that was given to Tampa Bay Construction Engineering was uh, approximately $115,000. So that difference is about 30 between $35 and $40,000 and that will be assessed against the contractor as well. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to respond to those. I recommend approval or authorizing the purchase of railing, approving the purchase of railing for BMX track from Smith Fence. Any motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this item? We probably should go ahead. 
pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> kind of using it. I think it's already in most I of it. I think there might be that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you that, uh, and I was going to save this for later, but um, I really appreciate the efforts of Lynn and, and the city staff that was out there and um, constantly being on top of all the issues that were going on out there, whether it was the asphalt um, and preparing to pull the contract or, in this particular case, the railing. Um, there never seemed to be, I was out there a couple of times a day, most every day of the week, and, and there never seemed to be a plan B for anything that was going on out there as a backup. And the fence was one that I know gave Lynn heartburn uh, all the way up to the end until that last bit of railing on the elite hill because they don't really like when they fall off of about a 35-foot hill onto the ground. <laughs> ground. So um, at any rate, so thanks to you guys and to Smith Fence for stepping, stepping in. I mean, I think the owner was out there, you know, as part of the process. And you know, it wasn't just railing. It was kind of a unique thing. It's not every day that we build an Olympic-style BMX track. So uh, it went off without a hitch. But uh, that's my only comment on the whole thing. But if there's no other... Uh, Discussion on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor and Council, item 14, authorize the city attorney to prepare an ordinance amending the land development code floodplain management regulations. And I'd like to ask Marie Dauphiné, our planning and redevelopment director, to give some additional background to the council regarding the proposed amendments to the land development code. I was going to show a PowerPoint, but I think it makes it more complicated because it's it looks more complicated than it really is. We're part of the National Flood Insurance Program. We um, became a participant in uh, 1971. And as part of the participation in the NFIP, um, we agreed to comply with Title 44, which is the Code of Federal Regulations um, pertaining to the minimum requirements for um, building in the special flood hazard area. So, and in 2001, the Florida Building Code was developed, and at that time, the Florida Building Commission determined that um, floodplain management regulations were not going to be in the Flo uh, Florida Building Code, that at the local level, we would have to adopt these regulations. So the city adopted them in 2004, and our regulations weren't just the minimum regulations for floodplain management. We went to a higher standard because we're participants in the community rating system, and we um, are able to obtain additional points, so we have, you know, lower um, flood insurance um, costs for the residents. But then, um, in 2010, the Florida Building Code and the commissioners decided, no, we want to, you know, regulate floodplain management. So we're going to take those floodplain management regulations, the individual, you know, communities had adopted and put them in, back into the Florida Building Code. Because there were issues with different communities, um, their floodplain management regulations really didn't comply with the NFIP regulations. So that's all it is. We, they separated it, and now we're putting our regulations back into the Florida Building Code. Um, the, the Department of Emergency Management um, developed a model code, and this model code was um, reviewed by Pinellas County, and they had a work group, and then they gave it to us to kind of work with, you know, whatever our floodplain management regulations were, because we do have the higher standard. So we, we pretty much um, were proposing to adopt the model code, and then we have a couple of other um, tweaks to it. For example, um, we've designated the city manager as a floodplain administrator. Um, there's specific references to sections of the Florida Billing Code, um, and we eliminated the min minimum base flood elevation in the town center code. And the reason for that was in the town center code, we required buildings to be at 11 feet. But that was under a um, previous way of measuring base flood elevation. It was the uh, NGVD datum. And that would have been 10 feet, so we'd say an additional one foot of freeboard would be 11. But now they've gone to this other way of measuring it, which is the NAVD, which makes it nine feet in Ellsmar for the base flood elevation. So anybody in the town center would be, you know, forced to you know go an additional foot. So we fixed that part and um, we brought it to the planning board and they have concurred with staff's recommendation that we adopt this model ordinance. Um, the vote was four to one and um, staff is also recommending that we adopt this model ordinance. And I just wanted to bring up one other consideration. 
at this time we have one uh, foot of freeboard. So if the base flood elevation is nine feet, we require buildings to be at 10 feet in the special flood hazard area. But if you require two feet of foot, uh, freeboard, that will be a significant savings in flood insurance for anybody that's building in the special flood hazard area. So there was an example from FEMA. Um, if you added two feet of free, free board to a new home, that might add $20 a month or $240 a year to your mortgage. But then you would save a thousand year, a thousand dollars a year in um, flood insurance if you were in an AE zone or 2000 a year in a B zone. So there's like, you know, you'd have significant savings as you go up higher and it's not that much more as far as building. So I wanted to know if the council would consider increasing the free board from one foot that we you know currently have to two or possibly three for new construction. Yeah, and I have a question too real quick. Um, and is that savings a total savings or is that the difference between the 10 feet or the one foot and the two foot? This would be for two feet. So mm -hmm. you would have actually still have a savings for one. Yes, for, okay. you would have probably like ten dollars and would be like one hundred and twenty a year or maybe five hundred dollars savings in flood insurance. So okay. each, you know, there's a right. yeah, there's this, a scale. Go ahead. Um, where, where are we considering sp special flood hazard areas? It's pretty much everything south of Tampa Road. Pretty much. OK, all of downtown Oldsmar and yes, because this brought up a question and discussion of time with Bruce today. What's our max residential height for a home that we allow to be built? Maximum 35 feet, 35 feet, yeah. like the county. Oh. OK, that was what I well, I actually looked it up. Since okay, we talked, so just I know because right a couple now. of days ago, there was a big article on the front page of Tampa Bay Times about new homes being built mm. that might take away from charm from older neighborhoods because they end up being these enormous homes and mm. you know yeah, like a lot of square footage um, so if we were requiring houses to say be 11 feet base flood elevation mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just curious that's the current requirement well 10 they feet still feet. can't go higher than 35 feet no but you would probably build in the special flood hazard area you use them um, stem wall not necessarily you know stilts so it would be from that that um, base flood, you know, that area. So you wouldn't really be. I just want to make sure we were encouraging like even larger, or higher homes that, you know, would affect the charm of the downtown area by increasing that. Well, we have architectural standards also in the, you know, redevelopment area. So. But that doesn't prevent someone from building a huge house. Just prevents them from building an ugly huge house. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how much how much property they have because you know you have you can't you can't maximize the site you know the site with building, so you have to accommodate you know for the drainage etc. So. Okay. Marie, uh, increasing that threshold up by a couple feet versus one foot, mm -hmm. does it have any impact? I know it has impact of savings to the individual building. Yes. Does it have an impact on Oldsmar's overall rating? Or does it work that way still with the change they made? No, um, it's really just for the property owner. For example, the, um, the residents that received the grant from FEMA, I think they went four feet uh, above the base flood and it was significant and their flood insurance savings is gonna be you know, really, really significant. That's why they did it, but it's not really going to so okay. then, if we didn't, if we didn't uh, adopt, oh, if, you, if we adopted the two feet, yes, we would have a yeah, better but rating. My, but my question is, um, there's nothing to prevent, even if we we put what our minimum is of one foot, mm -hmm. which is the requirement of the the state plan, right, program. No, that's the city's requirement. Okay, but is that different from the base flood in Oldsmar is nine feet? We are only required to require property new construction at nine feet, but we have that free board requirement, and we get additional points through the CRS. Okay, we, and right, we've had me, it for like chance asking the rest of the question, but thank you for clarifying that. But it wouldn't change um, if we didn't make that two feet. Um, it wouldn't change, and it was then optional to the builder, whoever's building their home. They would still get that discount if they went up two feet, correct? Yes. All right. So then if we made a higher requirement, mm -hmm. essentially we're forcing them to get the discount. I mean, if, I'm trying to understand the value of increasing it. 
Because I know One in the past is it used that to new be map. there was value to everybody by having tougher standards in Oldsmar. And it would this, help the individual property owner. Right, so definitely. it doesn't help their next door neighbor or the rest of the community. Okay. No, we might get additional points. Maybe, you know, we would go to another class. So instead of 20% discount, they'd have 25% throughout the city. I just don't know how they would um, determine that. We'll be, we're having our CAB visit this year. But another consideration or another concern is the new maps are coming out. And FEMA might, you know, change the base flood to um, 12 feet or 13 feet. We don't know. All right, but they haven't. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they haven't, haven't yet. No. They haven't done it. Right. Yeah. And, and when, when you were talking about the difference in the mortgage, what was that? I mean, because obviously to go to, for us to mandate two feet of freeboard, there's going to be some additional expense, whether it's stem mole or fill dirt or whatever it is to the homeowner. Mm -hmm. What was the, the difference in the more? FEMA had, they have um, a chart and they talk about, you know, each foot, how much more it would cost a, a homeowner if they were constructing a home. And for two feet, it would be $20 a month or $240 a year to actually, you know, raise a 2,000 square foot okay. house. Okay, so that's what they're anticipating the construction cost to do mm -hmm. that. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd like to, as you've said, that there have been people that have raised above that above the 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 one foot freeboard uh, to me it's and as you said it's it's only a benefit to the homeowner i mean i don't know that I, i'm excited about imposing two feet on them i would like to give that the option if they want to spend the additional money and reduce the insurance and raise it as you said four feet that's a financial decision that mm -hmm. i think lies with them um you know i i mean, I, I, I i'm fine with it a foot above and then if they decide to go above you know above and beyond that like the, some of the homes that you see in here that are clearly way above mm -hmm. um, that that one's out in Oregon anyway so it doesn't really matter but, you know, but, mm -hmm. I don't, that's those are my thoughts I mean I'm fine with one foot they get some savings if they will you know if they want additional savings you know then that's on them if they if they want to incur the cost and get the savings but the requirement for us to be compliant you said is nine foot currently um NABD Pardon? NABD right NADD, would you? National, let me see what, I, I printed that out. I have to have Lisa help me. Oh, it's National American. Um, vertical Datum. Datum. Vertical Datum. <laughs> National American. You know, I did, I was getting ready to. Did you just guess that? Uh, no, I knew it. No. Oh. <laughs> I was an engineering Very for good. a long time. Yeah. And the reason that the change is, is because it's the way that they calculate it, and it's really mm -hmm. not a change, it's just, the, more the, accurate. It's more accurate, but it's it, anytime you switch from NAVD or NGVD to NAVD, there's always a, a what is it like? It depends on where you're at in it's the state. It's almost like a foot. It's a foot, 1.1, 1.2 feet. You know, it's just an adjustment. It's really not a change. It's just you're starting at a different spot. So. Using a different scale. That conducts yeah. our lesson in surveying. <laughs> that education a later point in my life. Boy, <laughs> I would say that's ADD on your part. <laughs> 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 You're getting Sorry. raked over the coals today, Mayor. Uh, come on, it's funny. It is. <laughs> it's wreck, so, cracking me up. So was the request to authorize imposing the two the two feet? No, I just wanted you to consider it. But okay. right now in the code, we have not changed it. Okay. So all it is is we've our special floodplain management regulations have now been put into the model uh, Florida building code. Okay. So it looks more than it is, really. It's just they took it from one place and they combined it. There's been really no change other than uh, the way they measure it. The method of calculation, yeah. Okay. And it's, uh, the and new I want code, to be clear what I'm voting for, <laughs> quite honestly, because I'm not. Well, the right. new code, apparently, they, they feel it's clear. There's, you know, opportunity for people to apply for variances, um, and everybody's going to be on the same page. You know, one community won't have one regulation, and somebody else has something else. Am I right? Is, is it 1986, NAVD? Is that what it is? What year is it? 88. 88. Come on. NGVD. 88. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know it was close. Oh. Um, so approving this, we add the one foot. No, we, we left everything the same. We already have the uh, one foot. She's asking. I want to be clear on it. You were just giving that to us for a future. I'll say, you know, if you could consider it, we'll just put it in the code now. We wouldn't have to come back okay. to it at a later date. And I think it is not in the code. Well, I, mean, I don't know why you would. I mean, leave it up to the individual. That's what I think. And, unless, yeah. my thought is unless at some point, which Bruce? we could change it, it comes right. back to right. that we could gain points for the benefit of right. others. That case. Right. I mean, there is the other obvious value, and that is that perhaps, you know, in, in a storm, when we all come back, there'll be more of us here. 
<laughs> one obvious factor yeah. that is kind of important to maintaining so, a city. So what we're doing right now is authorizing him to amend it, basically for the adjustment from the NGVD just to, to NGVD. just to well, actually, just to combine right. it okay. into the Florida Building Code, and we actually have to do it because um, the Florida Building Code is the only one that really can regulate the design and construction of buildings. So okay, and we have a motion and a second, correct? We do. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Me. City Clerk? I don't have anything. Nothing, huh? Uh, City Council, first item scheduled work session for Oldsmar Little League. Um, the dates that they have uh, given us are November 10th, which is a Tuesday, November 12th, which is a Thursday sandwiched in, uh, in between Veterans Day or around Veterans Day. Personally, I would prefer the Tuesday just because that's when we normally meet. I would, it, too. And it keeps it's it, in the evening. It's easier for me to. Right here. Thank you, there. You got four. On the you got four. <laughs> hey, Eric. Um, you know, I wouldn't say not to have the meeting if I can't be there. I certainly would like to, but I'm actually, I believe that is the week that I'm at a so uh, industry event uh, in um, Las Vegas. So neither day is. Well, it's their other date options, Bruce. Well, it's these awesome. are the two they gave us, and uh, I don't know you go much past that, then you're going to be no, you know Thanksgiving. So it's the week before I'm good on the towns. All right. Yes, it is. And I know that they wanted that later, wasn't it? Yeah, 6.30 in the evening. 6.30. Perfect. Yeah. And so, I won't be able to attend that I have a conflict. So do you need someone there? Um, I don't think so. Do you, Bruce? I don't, I don't think yeah. it's necessary. I mean, we'd love to have you, Tom. I don't want it to. Really I, should have, I should have probably thought about that a little more than quickly answered it like that. But <laughs> now we don't need you there. Okay. Uh, next item is consider funding for the Neighborly Care Network, as you recall. Um, they presented to us at the last meeting. Um, we had originally had in the budget, uh, was it la the year before, $10,000, and then we dropped it to five, and then we dropped it to zero. It's been a two-step. Is that correct, Dan? Mm -hmm. Two years ago it was 10, then last year we dropped it to five, and then this year we dropped it to zero. So um, I don't know personally. I mean, they came to us, and that was all great. Um, they did indicate that they provide a little bit more service than we thought. Um, I don't know that I'm prepared to go to the 10,000 that they have requested from us. Uh, I would be fine with five, but that's up to you all and see how they do and perform and, and get back to us if we provide them anything. I don't, I'm not. I'd be fine with the five too because they're the only ones that service the, the elderly in their homes. And they deliver They, they to come them. to their homes. But so. I, you know, it's incumbent upon them to also provide us information right. and, and you know, Shame on us, I guess, if they were providing it and we didn't see it, but obviously none of us saw it over the years, yeah. so, but uh, we'll try and do a better job of seeing it. Any other thoughts on? I agree with 5000 also. Would you like a motion, Mr. Mayor? Sure. I'd make a motion that we add into the budget $5,000. Second. Oh, okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five nothing. Thank you. Next item is consider canceling the second meeting in December. Um, <laughs> this is something that we've done. For several years, with the exception of a couple of years ago, I don't remember how many, when a, a flag was being presented, and that was the only date that they were able to do it. But um, and, and we do it at this time so that city staff can uh, plan accordingly to have their items on agendas prior to that final meeting. I don't know if anybody has any objections to canceling the second meeting. Nope. You crying? <laughs> no, I was blowing my nose. Oh, yeah, I really don't want to have that meeting. <laughs> Here, just, I am never wearing this jacket again. I can tell you that. Uh, is there, if there's no objection. So moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have nothing as well. Thank you. Um, comments by council, and we'll start with the crying one down there on the end. Okay. Well, it has been said a lot, but I have to say it as well on the record of how, how um, the Lynn and the staff and, and the volunteers, even the volunteers, because there were people at the um, track that had worked and didn't get paid. They were volunteering. So it was just such an honor to be part of it. And, and the race was, it was terrifying going down that hill, but it was so much fun. And 
We all made it, and, and there were, I mean, no one thought, even the BMX people, no one thought all five of us would make it across the finish line. No, they, <laughs> none of them thought it. You did not. No, I thought all of you would make it. You would? Yeah. Oh, you love us. Maybe on stretchers. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't so, going fast. We weren't even going fast enough to get hurt. Uh, and I have we to make a point. <laughs> and I have to make a point, you know. Um, Dan and I, if you look at it as age groups, we came in first and second. <laughs> we, we were fourth and fifth, but... Um, <laughs> you can I'll just say thank you for that, because I don't think that's accurate, but go ahead. <laughs> I think it is, oh, you're right. Thank you. Okay, so, and, and well, I have... What are you talking about? <laughs> we're older than you, but we're not going to... He's that. not older than I am, are you? Yes. Oh, okay. Fine. okay. Then we'll give you we first okay, and second. We'll... I came in third again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have to really commend you, Mayor because I was very proud of you. You were there all throughout the whole process. You were there, because of course we can keep track of him on Facebook, because he's a Facebook addict. It's wonderful. <laughs> we love it. I did the thing. I'm 1,455 hours on Facebook this year. Oh my gosh. Mm. It but you, but you update the city and everything. We love your, we love your post, so, so don't stop. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I have to say that I'm, I'm just so proud of the city, but I'm, I'm really proud of you, because no matter what, you were there. No matter what, you were, you were backing up whoever was doing anything. And then it was a three-day event and you were there all three days for most of the time. Oh, yeah. I was there all three days, but not for most of the time. I don't think any of the other four of us can say that we were. But you had our, you were there, and you, and you represented us well. So I enjoyed watching it, but I could see that um, things were starting to go bad, and I wanted to have firsthand knowledge of kind of what was going on and what was being done and what wasn't being done. And Lynn did a great job, you know, uh, keeping us... Had we had one more day of rain, we probably wouldn't have made it. I don't but think. not all mayors would have done that. All mayors would have just let staff do it. Bruce's people, you know. I tried not to be would. in the way. So I just wanted to say that I was really proud of you, Thank especially you. proud of you. Thanks. Um, oh, hold on. I had to make notes because to remember everything. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to um, point out was I love the marketing report, Deb Pauly's marketing report, and I just wanted to point out one little statistic that's very interesting. 85% of our page views on our website are for recreation. Celebrate Oldsmar, BMX, parks, events. Only 15% of people go for utilities and city hall. 85% of the people that go on our website are looking for recreation in Oldsmar. And that is awesome. That's huge. That people, that, that that's what we're known for. So that was that. And then one more thing, and I know that it's getting late, but I have to make, give you guys an update on the art project, and I'm going to um, make it as quickly as I can. Okay. Um, Sierra, the girl that we chose to do the majority of the art project, has, has dropped the ball. And I didn't have any more confidence in her. She was not telling me the truth. She was not returning my calls. I don't trust people that only want to text. Sometimes, you, you know, you need to talk to people. So when she had told me the update that she was going to have the uh, models done for us, that was a month ago. And um, finally, I, I put it like this. I said, look, I said, our centennial is next, is coming up. I said, you know, we, we trusted you with this. And if we can't get this ball rolling, we have to move on to another artist. And so she gave me a lot of, you know, different, you know, excuses, whatever. And I was a little, I was a little, um, uh, maybe a little, um, tutorial with her. <laughs> I just kind of wanted her to know that you can't do that in the, you know, you might be a wonderful artist, but if you can't work with your clients and follow through on projects, you're never going to make it. So we just ended it and, and I wished her luck. And, um, is this all via text? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she finally called me back because I was very stern on the last message. I didn't say, Hey, it's Linda, you know, do you need some help? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is council member Linda Norris from the city of Oldsmar. <laughs> I was real, you know, she knew something was up. <laughs> so anyway, um, my proposal is, um, and I've spoken with um, Bruce about this, we all liked Akima's murals. Lakima, Matthew, Lakima, I can't remember her last name right now because I'm a little bit nervous about this because I really wanted this all to go smoothly and, and I think from here on out it is going to be. I had commissioned Lakima to do a mural at my home. And she showed me the, the concepts and everything, and they're beautiful. We all saw her murals that she's done in Tampa and Ybor City. So she's already proven herself with city projects. She's in contact with me. We were in contact all summer because I um, kind of gave her a little sponsorship for her Europe thing. She's not in school, so, you know, she's not going to have the conflict. 
So my proposal is, and she came out and looked at um, what we were thinking about doing. So my, 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 my hope that you guys will be okay with this is that um, on where the band shell is on, on Ari, in Ariel's Park, the two concrete pillars coming down and the concrete, what did you call the, the block? They're split face split, block. Split face block, right. And underneath, and then when you're standing looking at that, and then over here where the bathroom is, there it's ugly. It, you know, we were talking about it at the um, festival, how, how nice it would be to have murals painted on that to really enhance Ariel's Park. And Anthony's glow in the dark benches are going to be right there on the pier. So Lakima came out and we looked at it and, and, and she can do it. She, she is in very good communication. She texted me at 7.30 this morning. I wasn't even awake. Okay, we all oh, know that. Really? We all know that. You know? Yeah. You know, so um, I would I would like your um, okay to move forward with her making her, her coming up with three different concepts um, and presenting them to us and either we'll have to either do a work session or an agenda item or something and having us vote on it. But I would like she would also like ideas or input from y'all. What are the kind of things you'd like to see in the murals, you know, and, and we can send her all the emails and then she can come up with the three concepts. I can tell you that the concept that she came up for mine, my mural is going to be animals that are realistic and they're going to be spirit animals for all the people that I've, a lot of people in my life have died in the past couple of years. So they're all going to be like an animal in the spirit of someone. Janice is going to be a horse. Okay. Then in between the realistic animals, she did abstract, beautiful, abstract art in between it. So it was part realistic, part abstract, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what we choose or anything like that. I'm just saying that we've seen her work. I've seen her other work, and it's beautiful. I, and I do believe that I, I have full confidence in her that, that, the, that the project will now move forward with her. So I would just make two comments. One, if we were going to just throw a quick suggestion, I would say 100 years of old tomorrow would be the theme. Because if we're trying to get in time for a centennial, I think. Can you email so I can? Secondly, I remember I sent you that other business that does murals recently, J and S signs. So most of the murals that have been done in the city of St. Petersburg are that company, J and S signs. They used to be local to St. Pete. They recently moved to Portland, but they come back and forth all the time. So if we potentially open it up, I wouldn't be opposed to at least letting them also provide us with some options in case we do like those better. I mean, because what if she comes back with three options and we don't like any of them? Now we're starting that whole process all over again. Well, the only thing that I would say there is part of this whole process was to work with USF and the class and everything else. I, I and, and if you don't like them, I think but that maybe we went we could. away from the murals. That's my only hesitation. The only reason we, we ran away from them was because we didn't want to we didn't want to construct a concrete wall in order yeah. to put the mural. I like up. the idea of right. the band shell. I think it could use a spruce up and something more artistic. But I just want to make sure we're not limited to right. just give one. Her, part. I'd say give her a chance. See what she see what see what she can do because okay. she's amazing. What did the professor you, say? Um, he's actually out of the country, so we're only, um, we're only, he's, he actually, he's in <clears throat> Brooklyn instead of USF right now because he okay. got a, he got an art thing, an art thing in Brooklyn. So, but I haven't contacted Dr. Wallace yet because I wanted to see what y'all were going to say before I contacted Dr. Wallace. And I can How long is he going to stay up for? Yeah. How long will it be up? Can it be Girls up? be up can for we, all, the whole year. It'll, no, it'll be up for, for until it deteriorates and they can always be touched up. I mean, paint jobs aren't going to last forever. But t typically with murals, you touch them up, and so they could be up forever. They can I be like, changed. I like your idea about the centennial. I think 100 years yeah. of old tomorrow yeah. is a good theme because there's mm -hmm. a lot of great things that have happened in 100 years that you can incorporate. I don't know how. However, I just don't want to limit us. I mean, I just she wasn't the person that won. She did have great stuff, but we did consider a couple other people. And I honestly, when I looked at JNS signs and the murals that they've done in St. Pete, they are... They are classy. They could be there for 100 years. So I just don't want us to not consider potentially giving someone else another opportunity in case that way we have many options to choose from if we revisit and have another meeting. Well, if y'all could email me suggestions like Gabby's yeah. suge suggestions, that would be great because then I can give them to Makima and then we can move forward no, from there. No, we can't do that. Oh. Because of the sunshine law. Oh, because okay. Because ultimately it's going to come back to you for oh, consideration. No, no. So what my suggestion is Could they is, is contact Lakima? Um, if you're going to do it, maybe do it all to the city clerk 
and don't ask for comments back on anything that you're providing to the uh, to uh, to Ann, and then maybe we can avoid that possible conflict. So have them email Ann, and Ann will email Lakima. Or she'll she'll she can she provide them collect them. To, she can just collect them all and 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 put them in a, some type of format that she can forward them on. Oh, okay. Um, but. Um, I'm just really concerned about comments coming back and forth between oh, yeah, the five you're right. of you okay. about something that you're ultimately going to put to a vote and you're going to pay for. Okay. So I didn't think about that. Thank you. Linda, do you have any concerns just that we do this and we don't open it up to citizens here in Oldsmar to come and submit an idea or, or maybe not an idea, but like, you know, here's what I would like to do and consider me that someone might come after the fact and say, well, you didn't open it up to any of us? Well, I think that since we've been working on this for, what, five, six years, and we're this close, and it, I think that it, that would not be a problem. I think that everybody, not everybody, I can't speak for everybody, but I know those of us that are in the art venues, we, you know, we're ready for some public art in Oldsmar, and this could just keep going on and on and on. I mean, it's my opinion that, that Lakima can do this, that she is good enough, that she is responsible enough. We'd still be able to say that, you know, we'd still be able to have that partnership, the first ever partnership between a city and, 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 and USF, because that was a real big but feather in our cap. she's not in school there anymore, right? She graduated. Yeah, she graduated. We didn't vote. I mean, we didn't select her. I mean, at Gabby's point. I mean, I'm, I'm not suggesting we not work with her. I'm just saying that perhaps maybe we keep an open mind, you know, uh, to other citizens who are here, because that ship kind of sailed a little bit, you know, and we've selected someone who is doing some work out there still in that process, and so it's almost like we're doing something different, you know, that I think is a great idea. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not probably going to have a lot of design recommendations for you, Linda. <laughs> I, I like the mayor's jacket a little bit, but... <laughs> Beyond that, not much. I don't know if I want to see it on a band shell, though. Yeah. I just, I, you know, and, and really, I, I am an advocate for this to move forward because I've been on the council for the whole time we've been trying to do this. Sure. And the council has changed several times, and, and the mayor and I have been the only two that have been on for the whole time. And he can tell you, it's, it's one thing after the other. Now, with, with Sierra, the only thing that I didn't catch with Sierra was, you know, artists sometimes are uh, different. They're just different. And... And anybody that works with artists, Lynn can tell you, <laughs> anybody that works with artists, it's not always an exact science. It's not like coming and putting bids in and, you know, everything going just right. It's not that. that when you, the creative process is involved, there are, you know, glitches like that. So I just say we give her a chance. Let her, well, I don't let have her... any objection to her presenting something right. to us, but in terms of just, you know, so that we kind of plan this out. I mean, in order for us to actually go through that process, and we should probably consider whether or not we're going to open it up a little bit. I think if we that. open it up, that's not going to happen by the centennial, and it's probably not going to happen for another how many ever years, to be honest with you, because it's already, <clears throat> that's been the track record already. Yeah, but we still have to give her time and, and put it in an agenda and everything else and get the ideas, and whether we do it as a workshop or whether we're doing it here. I mean, this is not an overnight thing. No. I but mean, even do it with just it done, her. Getting it done for the centennial is what our goal is, really, is what our goal is. And I would also like you to just keep in mind the partnership between USF and the city of Oldsmar. And when we did look at her work and we looked at her portfolio, we all, in, we all mentioned, we all said yeah, we're all impressed. Oh, she how talented yeah. she was and she's worked with cities before. So I say let's give her a chance. I just, I think because now the project's changed and I think one, we all need to agree that we want to put a mural on the band shell with the funds. Um, I think it's a good idea. I'm not opposed to it, but I think we need to have a discussion. And secondly, if we do decide that's the way we want to go, I just want to make sure, like Eric said, I mean, I recently saw another company that does great murals that I think would be classy and elegant and last a long time and would appeal to multiple people and they're artistic. So I just want to make sure we give other opportunity. That way we don't get stuck in a work session. I think we should we... put it on an agenda. Yeah. I... <laughs> you know, I, I agree with you, Linda. I mean, we should put it on the agenda and, and decide what it is. Precisely and and, to, and to, to Linda's point, you know, I mean, this started out as art in public places. We sent it to the, who is it, Leisure? 
services that initially started with the yeah, donut with lady? Your services yeah. advisory board. And uh, and we did kind of open it up. An initial recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we opened it up to different artists and you know, it Big got up. shortlisted and and we did do that, and it went, it went, you know, belly up. We didn't like anything. We didn't like any of it. We didn't like any of them. Um, right. And we didn't like any of it. And then, and we did do, fulfill our commitment to look at USF. I mean, we did do that. You know, that was the idea was to fulfill the commitment and and go to them. It's unfortunate that the person that we picked. They're not fulfilling their commitment. They're not for, 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 for fulfilling their commitment. One of the artists, us. Anthony is. Well, that, well, but that's the one that we picked, the initial, right. the winner, and then. You know, I'm torn on murals. Um, I don't know if that medium is is conducive to be painted on. It's well, we'd have to skim coat it with with a, a skim coat of concrete. And I don't know that I, I've never been a big fan of that part underneath. Anyway, I think it's hideous looking, well, we and it would, would be hidden. Yeah, we would skim coat it all smooth with concrete. I'm talking besides, I, I get that, but the part underneath that's it just it, it just makes it visually it will yeah. make it tile. It'll but make it's it just visually be done too. It needs to be done. So hidden. I would rather see something done across the front. And pull, pull the front out or something. That wall is just stuck back there, like four feet. If you look, so at that's going to go. So I didn't okay. incorporate that in. I would have incorporated that in, but Bruce and, said or Lynn said it was going to eventually go. Who okay. manages these kinds of projects in other cities? Like, say St. Pete, do they have like a cultural arts director? Yeah, they do. I mean, maybe we need to think about this in the future because one, we don't really have any public art. Yeah. We're trying to manage it ourselves. That's a good idea. You know, and the Lynn's future. already got tons of projects he's working on. So yeah, but he just finished it. He's got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Maybe we that maybe that should be an agenda item. Yeah, because, I agree. You know, or maybe it's in the marketing department. And one thing, you know, you made a comment too about. Um, the marketing statistic, and I think it's great, but I still think there's tons of people we're not reaching for events. I mean, I've talked to people that live just down the street, not in sure. Oldsmar, but and they're like, oh, it's Oktoberfest? So I still think we're not getting the word out there enough, right. too. So maybe it's a whole marketing, arts, cultural thing we need But to I think this money about. has to be spent for right. art. For art. art. For no, art. I know, but yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe and need I, someone I, to own it. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, and the mayor's right. It, we had... It's been years, and we opened it up, and we and, and I didn't know that yeah. we opened it up, and we looked at all the ideas, I'm happy. and I just, yeah, so I that's why that. I just really because I could see someone saying, wow, "We did." I heard it. you go. Why didn't I no. know about? We were that? gonna. The, I mean, the original that was brought to us was gluing lizards to the side of the beam work. <laughs> Wasn't it? Whose art was that? Armadillos. It was armadillos, armadillos and lizards. lizards. And oh, and then we had giant pine cones. And a pine cone. All right, we're way off topic. Here. Anyway, oh, what time? Is we, it? Seriously. Anyway. Seriously. 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 So I just, you know. And, and I'll so. give you while we're while we're in a public forum, we can talk about this. Uh, she did great work. Um, I'm up in the air on murals. You know, a lot of the murals that you see are in blighted areas that you know they're trying to revitalize them. You see them in St. Pete, where it's you know, maybe an abandoned city building and, you know, where you typically see murals are in areas that need a little life brought to them, unfortunately. Well, that you see that in show, the band huh? show needs life. Well, I, it's I don't, ugly. Well, I know, but it's not really a blighted area. I agree that the band shell needs to be, hello, 1980s called. They well, want their band show. You know, I think it's also relevant to what's proposed. You yeah. know, I mean... And I think I it's a, of course, something that's give her like a chance. crazy wild, but right. you know, something that fits <laughs> the band right. shell. That's why I would like saying. you guys all to please email yeah. Anne I mean, look with just was. some ideas. That's a great idea that, that, that you had because we could get it ready for the centennial. Why don't you just open your box? I'm starving. It's okay. 9 o'clock. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I opened mine, but I'm like, I wonder if I can pull out eating and it. I, and I don't, I'm fine with the band shell, really, because it's kind of a cultural, you know, music and arts and, you know, and that kind of makes sense, but... So what do we do? Workshop? Is that? Are we motioning um, for an agenda item? Well, it's probably, it's probably well if, if it's item. okay, if you guys can email whatever suggestions you have. Motion for a workshop agenda well, item. We Is could, that what, what I'm hearing? The um, I think the decision that might have happened tonight was if the rest of the council was okay with proceeding with the project modified as Linda described it with uh, different artists, then, you know, we could have just said, prepare your three proposals and the thing will move forward. I don't get the impression that the majority is ready to do that. And uh, so the other thing for the artist's sake is uh, I, I don't know that we'd want to tell her to prepare your three proposals because I got the feeling that Y'all aren't really ready to say, yeah, that's what we're going to do. You seem to have questions about who might do it and where it's going to be 
and whether you even want a mural. So I'd be a little reluctant to tell the artist, yeah, go do your three concepts yeah. and we'll pick one because that I, don't, with Robin. I don't get that I don't get that vibe feeling that's where y'all are. In fact, <clears throat> I don't really know where you are once again. <laughs> uh, now, you can, I mean, a couple, uh, you know, have mentioned maybe we want to look at who else could do this for us, which is a rather different tactic because we've been on the USF path for over a year now, I guess, or at least that long. It's I mean, been a year. And not I think quite. it was last December you and right. I met with Professor. The right. professor so but if he's absent, we have well, no, no one to hold him so, accountable. Um, well, Dr. Wall no, Wall um, Wallace Wilson is not absent. I didn't contact him until I found out what the council decided. So I haven't, this just happened. I'm, I would be very reluctant to tell the artist, I agree. go do your three concepts and we're going to pick one of them. I don't think that's where the council is. I don't know where you are. I mean, in my opinion, I think if we decide that if, in fact, we want a mural, we want the best quality mural that we can get, whether it's her or somebody else. Uh, you know, that's, unfortunately, that is what I think. You know, I don't, uh, she did a great job, but I'm not a mural specialist. And if there are other people that might be able to provide it, if that's the case, I also want to point out that typically when that thing is used for a lot of events, those banners, those walls are covered up with banners. So yeah, but not when we're having like a, sure. other. Minor. I'm just. I not just when want we're to throw that. A lot of the festivals. I just want to throw that out there. I make a suggestion that we make this an just agenda down item the at the next meeting mm -hmm. with the intent to vote on what we want to do instead of doing it now under That's comments. Fine. Yeah, it gives everybody kind of a chance to, you know. I think that's probably a good suggestion, right. uh, and I don't think it's probably necessary to have a work session at this point. Right. You know, I think maybe uh, another 20 or 30 minutes of discussion, y'all can reach some direction. Yeah. That money oh. put in the budget for his assistant manager that you guys didn't want could go right towards the cultural arts marketing okay. director. So okay. we'll put it on the next agenda. Okay, that's what I think. Go with that, Linda? Yeah, I just really Wasn't hope we can get... Wasn't the money supposed to go really... to the university? Huh? Well, the it's, money... suppo it's supposed to go to for the, no. the collaboration between USF and the city. That was one of the things that was really nice about this whole project, was that we were bringing in, you know, the university students, and we were working with the city, and we're the first municipality in the Tampa Bay area to and, do that. And you, and so those that... were all the pluses. So I just wanted to give her a chance sure. to come up with the concept so that you guys can see what she could do. And to that... I, understand your, I understand your concerns, but sure. I really encourage everyone to... to please make it to where we can get something by the centennial because sure. that's when we really would like it. And that's the objective. And to that point, I think the one thing that we did do was commit to them to allow them to propose to us. And truth be told, he was shocked that we actually picked somebody. They thought this was an exercise for them um, as a project to work with the municipality, but they actually said that they never, he was shocked. Yeah, he didn't think very, we were going to even pick happy. one. So yeah. from that standpoint, I feel that we did provide a, a great opportunity for them to do this. It's unfortunate the one we picked didn't work out. So now we, we move on and we move on to the mural. And I think that's what we do. We put it on the agenda and see if that's what we, what we do and, and under what format. Will we open it up to other people, your, mm -hmm. whatever they are? Um, so motion to put it on the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear you. And oh, that's. I'm sorry that I'm sorry that it didn't work out the way that. I didn't think so. Happens when you're doing a council. That's what I thought. But it's okay. There's a consensus and. Okay, a consensus. Yeah. Well, I was motioning to get a consensus. Paint colors, let alone a matter of mirrors. So it's a consensus to put it on the agenda. So that's fine. Anything else? She wanted to know whether she should be here, so maybe after that one, or she would... I don't think it's good for her to be here. I mean, because we don't know what the decided. discussion is going to be, and I don't want to... Until it's decided. Yeah. Right. I don't want her to feel terrible that we're <clears throat> talking about other people, and yeah. right. we've, saw, we've seen her work, so that speaks for itself. Anything else? Vice Mayor? Um, oh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. My apologies for missing last meeting. I don't think I got to announce it at the meeting before, but I did have a work conference in yeah. Boca Raton that day. Um, I wanted to thank the firefighters and the sheriff's office for the BMX opening that whole week in Gator Nationals. They were out there, and there were a lot of little injuries, and they were um, did a great job. Lynn, of course, I mean, you did an outstanding job. Thank you so much because you, I mean, I felt so proud, and I did nothing. You know what I mean? I was just there, and you guys made us all feel like, just a part of history. You know, I just won the race. That's it. 
Oh, and I came in third. <laughs> in case you didn't know, I came in third. Uh, but Beat thank me. you so much, Lynn, and everyone um, for the city staff that, that worked hard to get that together, and the mayor, of course, I did. I enjoyed following all your posts on Facebook about it. Um, Historic Summit, so Jerry and Tozy mentioned this. It starts at 1 tomorrow, officially 1.30. And around 4.30, I'll be giving a tour of my home. So if anybody is not going to make it to the summit but still wants to do the tour of my house, because I know sometimes people ask when we're doing another historic tour, um, my house will be open right after the summit around 4.30, and then as well as this building here for anybody that wants to see it. And Amici's, um, I connected with Michael. Okay, and you. Um, thank you for that. And he um, gave us a free, also large um, sandwich platter, too. Oh, so we ordered a few things with the budget we had from the Historical Society, and Amici's Catering is going to be catering the event tomorrow afternoon in the library. And then lastly, um, just to mention it for anyone else that's interested in historic tours and preservation, um, Kenwood in St. Petersburg is having their historic home tour. Um, it's their annual one. It's November 7th. And they get about a thousand people that come out, and I always enjoy going and seeing what the other homes and history is in those houses. So if anyone else is interested, um, it's KenwoodBungalowFest.org, I think. And um, have a wonderful and safe Halloween, all the little kids. And that's it. Side Mr. Mayor, what place did you come in on that race? I think I came in two <laughs> spots behind Gabby, but two spots ahead I of remember, Dan. I remember giving you the elbow as we were kind of going back and forth. Oh. Someone had a picture of that. I yeah, yeah, I saw it. Anyway, <laughs> all joking aside, uh, you know, it kind of echoes what's been said, so I'm going to go through it real quick. BMX. I mean, what a great accomplishment. I wish there was a way, and this, <clears throat> this crosses past council into city manager's area and staff. I'm just going to suggest it. It'd be nice if there was a way that we could do something it goes kind of above and beyond. You know, in our company, when we have some kind of major accomplishment, we give a comp day to people. But, but something like that would be really nice to say thank you. We are um, going to do something. All right. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. Outstanding. But the, the, the vibe out there was terrific. I think our citizens were all very proud. Um, I think it's going to prove to be a really good use of the taxpayers' money. Uh, the exposure for the city, for the state of Florida, uh, was just terrific. <clears throat> and all the different countries that were there and represented. And it was interesting because... I made a point of asking like four or five riders what they thought of the track. Um, and I got the consistent response from each of them. And it was, uh, our first day, it was kind of slow. But, you know, the, the clay was kind of slow. Today, it's really fast. And I'm like, well, what do you think about the track over? Oh, my God. This is the best track. Oh, we're definitely coming back. <laughs> and I mean, every one of us, we're definitely coming back. So, you know, that's the proof in the pudding, the folks who are using it. It's, I think it's a very exciting thing. And I out talking to restaurants and, you know, other places in, in the area, and everybody was asking me about it. Like, how do we get involved as a business? How do we become a sponsor and things like that? I'm like, it's coming. <laughs> Don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> It's, it's, it'll be here soon, but it was a great accomplishment, and hats off uh, to the, all the staff and everybody who worked on it, and the work that uh, Lynn did on this is, it was really great. He's got an excellent tan right now, but he looks a little aged. I don't know what that <laughs> How does that happen all at once? You know, it's funny. We, we sit up here, and it seems like time after time again, we have all these wonderful new things happening in the city. And uh, it's just a constant. When I was on council before, I do not remember having the large number of ribbon cuttings that we now have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, kind of, we're up here talking earlier, like, all right, who else can go? Who's, you know, to cover? Um, there's just a lot of good things going on in the city. And I, I think that our citizens recognize it and are excited about being here. but. Uh, and what a, what a great honor uh, for the city to get uh, uh, the Purple Heart flag. And that, that that's just, you know, speaks volume of, uh, volumes of the city. And uh, in any event, uh, Oktoberfest, remember uh, all of us are there working. 
and uh, I'll send you some more information again, but just be there. Is that 11 times one. that we have to be there? Yeah, one everyone five. has to be there. It's from 11 to 5. Uh, the whole yeah. time? Yeah. 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 All of us are serving beer for six hours. Well, we're going to oh shift. Gosh. We're shipped. We're, or, oh, have you ever known? Oh, well, I've never done it. I mean, you I got to try not to I drink it while you I serve haven't it. bartended since <laughs> college. <laughs> yeah, well, and we'll rotate. As a matter of fact, I was probably going to reach out to a couple people, like city manager, and see if he wanted to come out and help. And things <laughs> right like here, that. if you want to ask him. <laughs> or, I don't know if you know him, if you met you him. Know. <laughs> but I won't put them on the spot and do it right here. But if they're not there, you know what they said, right? I thought there was shifts in um, between that. No. It's, gotcha. We're out there. It's one shift. That's the way they break them up out that's there. A that's a regular shift. And just, shift. by the way, this supports the local chamber of commerce. Uh, so it's their big fundraiser, so it's nice for us to come out and be supportive of them. <clears throat> and so I would encourage all of the community to come out and, and so forth. But that's all I got, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Sarecki. Thank you, Mayor. I have a quick question. Have you ever worked a beer tent before, Eric? Yeah. Anybody else? I was just doing it for on bikes. No, for the chamber. chamber. For, oh, yeah. oh my God! I'm I have. I've done it before. Yeah, I've yeah. done it for years. Yeah. Well, I know you have. But you have too. Oh yeah. I started in '99 working the beer tent, so I'm excited. Oh. Let's not date yourself. <laughs> oh, hey, be I was nice. just a wheeling. I bet. <laughs> but I'm not saying a word. <laughs> I've never worked in the afternoon, so I'm actually looking forward to that. When you're in elementary school, you can't <laughs> work the beer. There you go. <laughs> we I are. want to thank Tony Gross for the candy. My I know, wife it's is going to love that. Thank it's you very delicious. much. Thank and you, Tony. the Purple Heart. Thank you for, for that. I appreciate that. Uh, Lynn, I, when he mentioned it too, you have a great tan. I noticed you had a little sunburn on your cheeks there from being outside so much. Thank you for all you do for the city. And your staff, thank you very much. You did a great job. Today was a great day at Lockheed Martin. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah, it was. Flicking that switch. Doug and I had the front seats. The governor right <laughs> oh, there. I had the front seats. <laughs> well, we had. We were right in front. They had a better one. I'm going to send them a letter. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was a great event. At nighttime, I don't know if you've ever seen it at nighttime, but those lights are just really uh, pretty cool that solar panel light when you drive by down yeah. Tampa Road. But that was a really cool event today. I'm glad that I was involved with that. And tomorrow I'll be at the historical summit with you uh, doing a short presentation. I think they're giving me five minutes to do on the centennial. So. I think we gave you 15 maybe. Oh, 15? Okay. But it's five now since you said five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I paid, I wrote the check today for Amici, so they're paid for the food, so everything's <laughs> done. And I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. And maybe go over and see your house. Cool. Other than that, that's all I have, and uh, great meeting, and thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I have one quick thing? <laughs> sure, Jerry. I want to echo Jerry. what Linda sure, said, Jerry. and that is you did a really good job on those interviews. The interview you did with Bay News 9, I thought was excellent. You got the must air points in there. I mean, it was smooth. It was very natural. It was like, Thanks. wow. Ray Stadium. Wow. That was it was really good. Got you even got the Ray Stadium. <laughs> that was perfect. That was, a great, that was a great job. Thank you. And, and to that point, um, uh, Gus was there, and I think you talked to him, and we're going to have a meeting with him. He's all in support of anything he can do for to get the stadium here. So we don't know that it'll ever happen, but we continue to light small brush fires. But thanks for your kind words, and <laughs> it's fun. I, I enjoy promoting the city and, and that track especially, and th that really leads to my only comment, and that we've said enough about you, Lynn. So uh, he's like, Phyllis, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you, I get it. I'm Bruce and I were talking about, and I've said this before, you know, we started this in about 2012 when we made it a council priority. And uh, then Lynn and I and Bruce went and did the dog and pony show to anybody that would listen that might have a, some money in their pocket. And then, you know, when I was standing up there in the VIP area overlooking the track, you know, and we'd looked at it in that two dimensional rendering, you know, and you're just standing there and you're looking at the hill. It was it was just kind of surreal. And. Um, the night of the ribbon cutting, or the day of the ribbon cutting, <laughs> I even told Jeff this, I think, and Jeff, you did a great article today. Um, we appreciate that, some great words and quotes, but uh, I, I was getting ready to come over there that night, and I equated it to, I guess, when I was going to my prom, you know, and being nervous and butterflies in your stomach because you don't know if she's going to like you, you know, you don't know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You don't know how the date's going to go, you know, you don't know if, you know, she's going to just go home and, I mean, and I equated that to the track that, are they going to like us? Are they going to like the track? Are they going to, uh, when they went to um, 
they had a test run in uh, Rio, de Janeiro, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, of their Olympic track, and they boycotted the track because it was in such in not acceptable shape. And they obviously reworked it. Lens people went down there and <laughs> facility staff. And, and, That's why it's so tan. And rebuilt it and everything. So. Oh. Yeah, but um, it was neat. And, you know, I was nervous. And then to hear all the kind words that came out. And, you know, I, I was there, I think, Saturday morning, I think I was there about seven o'clock and there were so many different languages being spoken mm -hmm. on top of the hill. I had no idea what they were saying. They could have been making fun of me that I came in third place. I don't know what they were saying, but <laughs> yeah, I came in third, but uh, it, it's great. And I think the city should really be proud. And not only the city, but I mean, you heard so many great things from all the other elected officials from around the area about how great it is. And, you know, it is great for the area. It just so happens to be in Oldsmar. And I thank Bruce and the city and Lynn for having the vision, you know, and 15 years ago to do this. Who'd have thunk that we'd be, you know, where we are today and, and have the greatest track in the world. So I don't really have anything else. Oktoberfest, I'll try and be there at 11. I might be about 12. I got ready to go. I, I may have to do so. But uh, it's a great event. We're supposed to have beautiful weather for this weekend as well. Um, so I, if there's nothing else, you got anything, Tom? Uh, not anything. Thank you. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. Congrats, Bruce. Yeah, also on the track. Yeah. I don't know if we mentioned you, but I think you were pivotal. <laughs> no, it was a, it was a, it, you know, I have to say, I bet it was painful for Bruce to watch us ride that track, knowing that he, as an adult, has competed in BMX and won. He's probably <laughs> looking at it going, wow, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, I, and I don't know who mentioned it, but... You felt like we were actually going kind of fast until we got back to the finish line and the elite guys went down the hill and you went, wow, yeah. we were going slow. We have our feet on the pedals when they pressed go oh. on the ramp. Like, All I can tell you is prepared. I'm glad I was not mic'd up when he said, and we're letting the elites go. And I looked over to turn one and I'm like, I heard you. I, oh. <laughs> I said, oh, bleep, here they come. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they caught you. No, they stayed bailed out before they got to you. I was they just started, to get they to the started end. slowing down around right. that lap. I could hear them coming behind me, and I was just trying to hurry. This is just like you don't have to outrun the Gator, you just got to outrun Dan. <laughs> 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 That's all I have. Adjourn. Oh, we're so kind to one another. <laughs> Never wear the jacket again.